Hello. I need to um, make sure that I have the quality transcoding options today. And I also need to um, do a couple more things setting up the stream, but I w thought I would start on time today. Oh, thank you, Nui, for letting me know. All right, I need to get the channel point stuff out. Review request queue, there it is. Okay, why do I have some hydrates <laughs> from yesterday? <laughs> I'm just gonna mark them, I'm just gonna reject them. Give you guys your points back. Um. Oh, and I need to set the stream titles. The stream title is gonna be wrong in the VOD. I need to go remember to fix that. Um, that's okay. More Rust Exploration. Make sure the title matches. Copy that. Paste it there. Fix the mistake I just did. It, the, cat, the tags are all missing. I need to add the tags. Oh, great. It doesn't even remember what the tags should be. Probably programming. Um, what else? It's going to make me go back to my old VOD, isn't it? To figure out what tags I should use. It's going to be one of those days, I'm afraid. Um, I, if I go back to my own video, old videos and see what tags I had, that would help, right? Can I just... Okay. Software development. That's the other tag I usually use. Software development. Do they have a Rust tag? That'd be cool if they did. They don't. So we just have programming and we have software development. How come I'm not hearing my own audio? Is my audio screwed up today? Could someone tag me in chat to see if I make sure I hear that alert at least? I'm not hearing the alerts for when people chat. Uh, that's done. I'll just put that in the back. Oh, thank you, Nui. That worked. So the alerts, the little pop messages for new chat is not working, but the when I'm tagged, it is working. Did I? I did not even say hi yet. That's why my stream helper is like, you haven't said hi. Hey there, Nui. Hey there, Buff Seagull. How are you doing today? Okay, yeah, I'm just confused. It's This is what happens when I miss a stream day. <laughs> You're just wondering if when I was going to go live today. If I if I stream, it's, I try to start on time. And um, yesterday, I didn't wake up until like el past 11 a.m. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess I'm not streaming today. <laughs> Problem is just if not sticking to a, a good sleep schedule. It really screws me up. Had way too much caffeine. Yeah, I've gone on and off caffeine. I'm back off of caffeine again. What did I miss from yesterday, Nui? I actually saw that after the fact. Yeah, I was asleep th that whole time. <laughs> I need to update the today command, though. And I need to post in the Discord, so hold on, let me do that. Yeah. All right. So we're going to the the game. Oh, when am I going to fix this? <laughs> Why does it have to be so wide? All right. One of these. One of these years. Today. You can probably just get away with just updating the link, right? Yeah, I think so. So we're gonna paste. That there's too many H's there. Update. All right. Hey there, man. You added a license. Cool. So maybe I can actually add that to the plan today. Oh, well, let me look. Um, you had that in Discord. That link. All right. Uh, let me go find it again. You didn't spell license correctly, but that's okay. Is 
Is that the MIT license? It's weird. Oh, because you misspelled the, the name of the file, like, it doesn't recognize what kind of license it is. I guess I have to read the license to make sure it's MIT. All right, it looks like it is. Interesting. It says the, I think you, hmm. It says the above copyright notice, but the, that's not a copyright notice. All right. Did I screw up my license? Is that what's going on? Let me look at my own license stuff. That's in GitHub. Um, I'll just pick a random project. I also noticed I'm missing a license on the Minesweeper code. Yeah, that one had a copyright as well. All right. Good morning, Nightshade dude. Oh, and um, 715209. Hello, sir. And Atomic Nibble, how are you doing today? Let's see if I have a beast nearby. Nope, he's missing. No beast today. <laughs> Can't even see him. Oh, the is it the hydrate ones from from yesterday when I wasn't even going? Yeah. Hey there, Romania hate. It's going okay. I messed up my sleep schedule. I didn't wake up until like past eleven yesterday, and so I just I'm like I'm so late. I'm not going to stream today, which is a good thing because I actually did some work that is non-stream related, more consulting related. Hey there, Kamundi and Resubaka. Yeah, so I might have some consulting work coming up, which will disrupt my stream schedule. Hydrate, did I did did I say? Uh, where's that window? Yeah, okay, hold on. Now, window telling me if someone... Yeah, night should dude. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, I hit the wrong button there. Complete. Okay. One more thing. I need to update the stream plan. But yeah, I might... I might have a disruption to my stream schedule, like, for a couple of weeks, because I have a, some consulting work that I'm doing. If it goes through. And pretty sure I can't stream it, so... Let's see, stream plan. I am back today. What are we saying? It Continuing my rusty journey. There is a link. Again, I can close this because that window is huge and gets in my way. All right. GitHub just changed the style. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I know what you mean. I don't even know if I'm using the new style or not. There was a way to, like, preview it, but I don't see it anymore. Maybe I'm on the... <laughs> Maybe I'm on the new style, I just didn't notice. I would recognize that my Rust playground is in Rust. And I don't have a license file there either. What what the heck am I... I'm forgetting to do this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to remember to do this myself. So, notes. Uh, what am I doing? Not, I'm not going to put it in notes. I'm going to put it in my to-do. Uh, it doesn't know where my to-do is because I'm in a different project. Hold on. Let's open a file. Let's go to... Um, to, to do in my main project where I usually am. Collapse all this stuff. <sighs> Legal, right? So I need to um, add license.txt in repositories. That should have them. The ones I've seen so far where I'm missing them are uh, Mines and um, Rust Playground. Just want to make sure I don't forget that. All right, now that I've started up the stream, um, what am I going to do with this? Minimize that. 
top right feature preview at bottom. I don't see it. So this is what I see. I show that. This is what I see. I don't see anything about preview. Do I need to go to the top level of github.com? Hey there, Gadam. I'm okay, Gadam. My sleep schedule's all messed up, <laughs> but I'm recovering. How are you doing today? Click my avatar. Okay. Oh, I see. Feature preview. Okay. I hid that because, um, yeah, this is what I get. No features available. It's not available to me. I guess I'm not good enough. <laughs> That's okay. I don't need to. I don't need. I don't need to be, to be seeing it. I don't need to be in the in the bleeding edge. That's okay. Oh, I'm already on the new GitHub style. Okay, busy at work as usual. Good job. Keep up the good work. So I can't go back to the old style. I'm locked into the new one. <laughs> That's fine too. Hold on. Another hydrate from seven one five two zero nine. Cheers. Okay, now that I'm 11 minutes in, I should probably um, declare that the stream has started up. Let's go back to what this used to say. Hmm. We did that one, right? So I think the first thing I wanted to start off with today was um, trying out something that man told me about in Discord, which is a debugger, which actually might get me past the problem I have with slices. So trying out LDB uh, extension. It's code LDB extension in VS Code. And first, let's illustrate the problem I was having. So for example, in this binary search program, let's say I wanted to debug what the V slice here looks like. So I put a breakpoint here, and I tell it to go debug. Look at that unable to read memory and the length is all messed up right so if I change it from a slice to a vector of t which you can do really easily by doing that and then um, making it a different variable and then having um, a um, let mute actually this is no longer mutable then uh, let mute v equal uh, vv dot dot there's several ways to do that now if i debug it now i can see the v the original um or i can see the v slice um it's interesting like it's only when you pass in a slice but if you pass in a vector and then make a slice you can debug the slice so it's like the you can see here when i um i tell it to um look at the second half it actually works and it updates what the slice is so as we keep going now the length is three now the length is one and then finally it should see the actual value right return that one exactly so we get um the value nine here because 144 is the ninth, is at position nine in that vector, right? So it's a, vi a, a silly little binary search. I actually did this as a challenge. Someone in Team Talima's or Team Talima's stream was doing this, um, or it was Team Talima was doing this in C++, and someone in her stream challenged that, me to do it in Rust. So I did it in Rust, and um, this is the third iteration of it because I did it in a naive way, and then they said, oh, you can do it more I, idiomatically in Rust using a match with ordering and I'm like oh, okay I'll do that <laughs> hey there Toulouse how are you doing today so um, while I was doing this I, I um just curious about look like I actually had a bug in here the bug was I had a plus one there and it was uh, crashing at runtime um, and I was debugging it and I couldn't see the um, I couldn't debug the slice because the original code had this in it Go back to it, just pass the slice in like that. And so we have this problem that um, the debugger I'm using can't see the slice in some contexts. Hey there, ProSam. I am doing okay. I messed up my sleep schedule pretty badly and like slept in 
over two hours yesterday. I'm like, oh, I'll just call it, call it for the stream today. <laughs> but I got some, um, I guess you could say research in advance of a consulting job done. So that was good. So yeah, once again, um, if you missed it before, I might have to take a, a, a brief hiatus or time off from the stream for maybe a couple months, a couple weeks to a month because of a consulting job I might be doing. They need me to do it like full time and um, they probably won't be okay with me streaming it. So, hey there, Clayman. Oh, yeah. Actually, maybe make some income for a change. That would be nice. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if it pans out. It might not even pan out. All right. So, so what I want to start today is a man in Discord. And I'm not just meaning any man. I mean M-A-A-N who's in chat today. What happened to my Discord window? Did I close it? Yeah, let me go back to it. It was in the coding channel. Uh, let me link to it, actually. Copy message link. Okay. So if you have Discord open, you can jump to that. So man says that it works for them. Make sure that I'm using code LLDB, which I'm not using. So I'm going to try that out and see if it... Because this is really annoying to me that my debugger doesn't work. So if, um, if it's as simple as switching to a different debugger for Rust, hey, why not, right? So this is the exact problem I want to solve. I want to see the slice in the debugger. So we're gonna here we're gonna do it live and see if it actually works. Code LDB installing. Hey there, man. <laughs> we're trying out your suggestion, Code LDB, and I suppose I don't even need to reload. Okay. So then, what happens if I just debug again? If it's that simple, that would be a nice start to the day, wouldn't it? Um, that's different. Oh, it works. I have to get used to this, though. Hold on. I can see the general purpose registers? That's so cool. Floating point registers, too. Wow. Not that I would ever need to see the registers, but that's neat. Okay, and then um, where's... Okay, there's mid. Neat. And does this work with the call stack? Okay, this is different. Cool. You will Python 3.5. I'm not sure what you mean by Python 3.5. Um, let me see. I can hear. Let me switch back to the other debugger. Actually, I'm not sure how to say which debugger we're using. So the only thing I know for sure will work is if I um, disable the um, inst extension we just installed. So let's disable it and reload. Good thing reloading actually is pretty fast. And then um, debug again. Yeah, see, this is the... Um, I suppose this is the C, C++ extensions debugger, which would be Microsoft's debugger. Yeah, so I see the same thing I do in the in the watch window on the left. Hover over V, it's all messed up, right? Otherwise, everything is working. So then I switch to uh, code LDB, re-enable it, and back to debugging again. And it's working a lot better. Let's let's go for it. <laughs> there are differences though. The call stack looks different. I can still read this though. Interesting that it says union for option, not enum. It, that confirms my suspicion that under the hood enums are actually unions in disguise. You need Python 3.5 for code LDB. I think I already had it because when I installed, um, hold on, I, I need another shell. 
Make another shell, please. <laughs> there we go. Uh, when I installed Node.js latest version a couple weeks ago, it in actually installed the latest Python. Yeah, I got 3.8. Rust, 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 rust. Hey there, A squared. So because man gave me a solution to fix this debugger issue, I'm going to give man a lot of points today. Let's give him 10 more points. It's a rocketing rise to the top of the point leaderboard because of all this useful advice. Yep. Oh, and thanks, Pro Sam. I just saw the congrats. Yeah, we'll we'll see if it pans out. <laughs> all right, did I miss anything else in chat? I don't think so. Oh, do I know about the official Rust Playground already? No, I don't know about that. Let's look at that. Did not know about that. I'll put that up. Oh, thank you for the follow there. Neat. Hey, let's see if it has the same debugger issue. Why not, right? I can just copy paste all this code here. Uh, can I make it dark mode? Aw, no built-in way to switch to dark mode? Oh, it's what you linked last night? I'll have to give you a point, too. How come I didn't see it last night? You share code with and lets you import most crates and things. Only the editor has a theme for dark mode. Okay, well. It's very useful. Thank you, A squared. And then also, um... Oh, where is it? How come I'm... I'm having trouble today. It's Kamundi. <laughs> Let me trouble attributing things correctly. Let me give you a point too. <laughs> theme drop down. Is it in the theme drop down? Oh, maybe. So, what do you think? Clouds midnight. Oh, there we go. Okay, we just need to pick one I like. That one's okay, I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can make it bigger. Nice. That's your first point. I'll have to give you another point. All right. So let's see if I can debug. I want to put a breakpoint on this line. Can I do that? Um, double click. No. I'll figure this out. There is no debugger. Yeah, there's a debug here. Look at that. Oh, that fooled me. I thought it was going to actually debug. Why would it matter then if we can't debug? Why choose an optimization level debug? Oh, no, here's a test here. Hold on. It's weird that they... Hmm. Why would it matter? <laughs> Why would this matter if we're not going to run any debugger? Run and look at the output. Yeah, all right. All righty. Well, I had my hopes up. Because <laughs> it can change performance, but why does it matter in um, in a playground app like this? You can look at the assembly. Ah, there you go. kimundi has got it. I might want to look at the assembly in there. You can also use Godbolt. I've heard of Godbolt before. Yeah. Thank you for the follows. All right, so... Let's play around with this test. It should say nine, right? What's interesting is it says it's never used, but then it goes on to run it. <laughs> I think it's trying to tell me it's never used in the main program. Next to the test. Uh, right here, right? This one? Or this one. I guess we wanted to see an intermediate language or assembly. Uh, did I hit the wrong button? I think I hit the wrong button. Show No, I did hit the right button. It's not showing me any assembly. <laughs> <laughs> is it because it has uh, warnings? It does compile. I guess I have to say um, allow dead code. 
Very picky. Okay, we can tell it to allow the dead code. Uh, I don't need to save. Show assembly, please. Due to multiple alpha type requests, the explicitly specified alpha file will be adapted to each something. Function is never used main. I guess we're getting rid of main. Go again. Um, I don't know how to how to get this to work. <laughs> Gobble seems scary at first because it has a giant privacy policy when you first visit it, but it's a fantastic website. Huh. It works if you make it a library. No main or test functions. Well, I can't. What do you mean no test functions? Okay, so are you saying I have to actually comment out the whole test too? I keep hitting control S because I think I have to hit save. Nope. Still have two warnings. I don't know what does this means. Due to multiple output types requested, the explicitly specified output file name will be adapted for each output type and ignoring out dir flag due to o flag. Yeah. Put all your code in main. <laughs> okay. Why do I have to go through those different things? Like this isn't even something I did anyway. Um, I'm gonna do what Kimundi said first. Make the function pub because that sounds like it's a smart thing to do. Nope, that didn't help. Yeah, but then I won't be able to call it, will I? Okay, you're actually you're, what you're telling me. I think is in is to do that, and then what? I can't have a function. I should be able to have a function. Okay, but okay, I'll just humor you guys for a second. I will take this and put it in place of this function then. So here I have to do like um a uh, let index equal that, right? I can do that, I think. And I have to get rid of the returns though. So that's a break. Right? And then I have to do an unwrap. And I don't have V. Instead of V, it is um, data. Okay, yeah, I need to make another thing, right? I have to say um, let mute V equal um, address of data, and we're making it a slice. No, and there's no key. Key is value, so just say let key equals value. Nope, I still get two warnings that I don't know how I, I didn't specify any flags. It must be something some default setup. <laughs> Let me try the playground that you guys are doing. I want to see the assembly, please. Show me the assembly. Nope, I get the same warnings. Well, even with this one, I'm getting the uh, mornings scroll down. Oh, there it is. Was I, is that, was it there all along and it just didn't scroll? Oh, I'm just so stupid. I thought that was the end. When it said finished, I was like, okay, I'm just dumb. So it probably worked all along and I just didn't notice. <laughs> I can, I can compete with that. I can do V's because I'm going to actually have the answer down below. Not, it's not going to be above. It's going to be below. <laughs> It said that, yeah, so but basically I was doing all that for n no reason. I can do, undo all this completely, right? I can go back to using um, a function and everything. I probably don't even need that, right? Yeah, show me the assembly of that. Okay, it didn't do that, so it, it is something I did. Was it doing it in main enough? 
Yes. Okay. So it just had to. It has to be called from Maine. Well, but I was using the generic in the test. It's just it it doesn't generate assembly. I guess if you um, have a test, it has to be rooted in Maine, which I guess I can understand. So now that it's rooted in Maine, it's too bad I can't resize this thing. Then I can see my assembly here, which I guess is cool. Change it to a release and it's like a billion times smaller. Yeah, how does it actually say how big it is? I guess I can judge by how far we can scroll. And then try um, release, show assembly. I don't think it's a whole lot smaller, but it does seem a little bit smaller. It's hard to tell, though. Is it because of the runtime? God builds a little better because of the annotations and color and whatnot. I can try it. Try my code on God Bolt. Godbolt.org. Oh, yeah, this is the um, huge privacy policy. Should we turn this into a privacy policy reading stream? Compiler Explorer was created by Mr. by Matt Godbolt. That's cool. That's his last name. I'm impressed. Then the source code, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah. This is what it does. There's a Microsoft privacy policy. If we use theirs, if that's discarded and accessible, if you share it, then they store your source code. They obfuscate your IP address. They seem to be really nice about it. The, that's actually a URL shortening service? I didn't know that. I've been using tiny URL. Cookies. GDPR. You can even call them if you want, but don't do that. All right. Use optimization level three. It's actually a good, yeah, I think it's a good policy too. Kind of weird that they force it down your throat though. All right, so I'm going to pull my um, code in there and see what it does. I need to tell it it's Rust probably, right? Yeah. And then... Um, why is the output so small? <laughs> is it because of the compiler options? Compiling. Still compiling. No assembly generated. Huh. Oh no. Can we make this bigger, by the way? Can we make it bigger, please? There we go. Okay, why would I not get assembly? Oh, I guess I could have done it with that. Make main pub? Really? You have to do that? <clears throat> oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> it's strange. Why would you have to make main pub? Does that imply that I don't even have to do that? I could have just um, made the... Um... This one already is pub. Okay, but um, would it and accept that? No. So I do have to have that pub then. All right, interesting. Okay, so there's all of our assembly, and that's, I'm guessing op level three is release. So zero would be debug. So 2179 versus 263. Yeah, much better. <laughs> Thank you, man. Or should I say mon, because there's two A's. Need to mark the function pubs or else it gets treated as static annotated items in C store scut. 
So how does it work normally when I'm making the program then? If I'm not calling it pub, is it just special in that um, it gets turned into a, a um, symbol for the linker to find, to call from the, from the entry point? That's my guess. Reminds you of Zig's claim that it generates better C code than the C compiler, even though it uses LVM. So I, I was looking at Zig this morning because I forgot the actual name of the language was Zig until this morning. It just popped into my head. Oh yeah, it was Zig I was supposed to look at. <laughs> Turn off the operator and use the web theme's dark mode. I think I had it off for this one. Yeah, it's not on. If I turn it on, it's going to do that. Yeah, I have dark mode off already. It must be um, smart and using um, my Windows preferences. More settings. It's already on. It already guessed my my um, my uh, theme based off of my OS settings. I think. Yeah. Actually, if I learned how to do that um, from you, didn't I, Above Seagull? Didn't you point that out? In Adam's Discord at one point, there's a um, media query you can you can use to, s to find out what the user's preference is. Which I think is pretty cool. Main is a symbol that needs to be exposed to so those to have something to call. The Godbolt compiles it as a library. Oh, I see. So... Okay, that makes sense. They didn't tell it that this is a library or a binary. If we told if we told the compiler it's a binary, it implies pub there. Makes sense. Hold on, then why did we need it to have a main? If it's a library, shouldn't that work too? Something special going on here. It has to not only be um, main, it also has to be a pub. If I make that a main Z, it probably won't work. Oh no, it still worked. Oh, is it because this is a generic? You're saying, like, if I made this non-generic, let's make it non-generic. So that would be, like, I th I32. And then get rid of this. Oh, yeah, look at that. So it's because it was a generic. No code was generated. Generic function cannot be exposed in a compiled library. Nice. I'm learning all sorts of new things today. Thank you, Silmeth. Compile binary and show its output too for what it's worth. Well, I know it can compile it because we can see it here. Oh, it can compile a binary. I see. I need to probably tell it that it's a binary, right? Or does it guess it by the fact that I have a have it pub there? Okay, well, I, I think I've, I've enjoyed playing with Godbolt long enough. <laughs> All right, let's move back to this. So, I guess I can just get used to the fact that it has it nested inside of something called local. It's fine. All right, so um, that's done. Let's move on to going back to uh, the tool I was working on. So. Current task. I spell it correctly. Okay, we already tried out that. We're going to use it. So porting Python to Rust. Actually, um, I don't know what we're doing next. So it's um, reviewing work from last week. Let's do that first. Don't need that. All right, here we are. No, wrong project. I need to go to this project. Yeah, it makes sense, Smith, that they're um they don't actually have a presence in the in the build products until you actually um instantiate them, just like a C plus plus template. Extem extensions have been modified. I hate seeing that. I don't like seeing that at all. Maka S what might have changed? Did they fix this bug? Nope. Still say server return four oh four. Let's reload. Hopefully nothing breaks. Monka S. Monka Shake. Okay. 
Can I still build? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> done with that. I, what I was working on was um, tools, rust, source, main. Tools, rust, find item, source, main, really. Okay, and um, I had left all of this original Python work there. I don't think we need it anymore. Because we ported all of that, so I'm done with this. Okay, so um, I think the way I had this set up last week was I ran it from a terminal if I was in the stage directory, right? Items, Rust. And I had it connecting to the local server, I think? Yeah, okay, so I need to run the local server. Yeah, decided I don't want to risk um, showing private key, real private keys on stream. So serve. They're not part of a compiled library's assembly, but unlike C++ libraries, they actually exist in metadata. Okay. So Rust doesn't need headers. Interesting. Interesting to know. Flyken! How are you doing, Flyken? Also, hello to Selmuth and Nathaniel. Uh, Bum Nathaniel Bumpo, of course, and Cheese Gee. All right, so I said hello to everybody. More points, that's right. Okay, so running this again should work. Oh, and it never ran. Um, I mean, it can't connect. It is running. Oh, wait. I wanted to do this, but I couldn't because of the... Because of the... Uh, had to allow the signature. Maybe... And I did delay that. So maybe I want to do that first to try to figure that out. So I, I had to actually run it from the secrets folder, right? Items, Rust. Yeah, so we're connected. All right. <clears throat> I could probably get rid of all the commented out stuff, right? Should I keep it? Sorry, there's a bit of... <laughs> I'm a little bit distracted by noise. Okay, what did I just do? Okay, I got rid of that Python code, right. Okay. Now... Did I want another terminal window to build it? Cargo build? Yes. Right, one of them doesn't have... This chat handler doesn't use the WebSocket. That's right. I forgot about that. Cool. And then I can run it again. Connected. Cargo road. Not cargo build. Cargo road. That's right. Or move it. That's what source code is for. Yeah. I had that um, in the code for a while because... Um, I wanted to um, show the city people that the that there were um, we came up with basically three different ways of doing a dynamic dispatch table in Rust: hash map with um, functions, hash map with closures, and hash map with boxed handlers, where a handler is implementing a is it is a trait that we're implementing. But I guess we're done demonstrating that. I can get rid of this now, right? Just because I have it checked into source control, I don't need it anymore. So then getting rid of all this to clean it up. I don't even need lines there. I get rid of all this junk. And get rid of this. 
and get rid of that. Our lib target, as far as you remember, contains intermediate representation of generic functions codes. You can use them distribution. Oh, okay. That's cool. Hey, Con Chris. Deleting code. Oh, how good it feels. <laughs> nice one. Okay, we don't need the naive solution anymore. Oh, I never did this one? Oh, no, that's if we use a static met dispatch table, right? Did I want to just move to the static dispatch for now and get rid of the dynamic dispatch? Oh, no, no, I wanted to keep this around until after we were done porting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't need this, right? This if self stop break is accomplished by this condition in the while loop, right? So I don't need the original Python code any here anymore. Right. You have a distinction between to do and this can go? Not not in this file. I don't usually keep around commented code. But I did on Friday because it was um, helping me like compare side by side and show people like the different ways it could have been done. I need to take a break in the next half an hour. All right. Sorry that people are talking in the next room and it's really, it's really distracting. Don't tell them. <laughs> Oh, right. I wanted to clean this up because this is not the message we're getting. It's connection closes the wrong error, right? I was going to um, fix this. So um, I want to force it to disconnect on us by corrupting the signature first. So let's do that. Let's. The signature is mutable, so I can say signature 0 equals um, FF, right? And then... Um, Cargo build. Yeah, so the actual error I get is um, protocol. Interesting. Not connection closed, but protocol. Interesting error. You can't hear a thing on stream because this microphone is pretty good at canceling that noise. Yeah, but um, my ears are not are, are more sensitive. <laughs> um, do I want to keep that around? What was that for? Oh, that was to get it to. I don't think I need that. I don't need it to end, end early. And I technically don't need that one either. All right. Okay, so it's not connection closed. But instead we're seeing that it's a protocol connection reset without closing handshake. I guess I can just, the naive approach would be to just copy that and put it in here. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Obvious disconnected.
Reconnection successful? Am I back? Thought it was just you, huh? No. That, uh, that's only happened one or two times ever before. Where I've completely lost the uplink to Twitch. Licking my lips, huh? <laughs> what? I got kicked out of transcoding? Well, that's not good. Is it going to be one of those days? So what? I just got my um, transcoder yanked out from under me? Did the stream actually stop and then it... It... Eh. Oh, well, so d does that mean the VOD got broken up too? Hold on. I need to go to home. I need to go to videos. No, it didn't break the VOD up. Oh, now I'm dropping frames again. Yeah, I'm gone again. Dropping frames, dropping lots of frames. There's a new one? Oh yeah, you're right. Well, shoot. Well, let me at least fix the title of the other one because I it started before I changed the title. If there was a way to merge them in Twitch, I would do that. But the other way is to just um, re-upload from YouTube. Well, that sucks. Well, hold on. Dashboard. How do I get this tran the transcoding option back now? Hmm. <clears throat> Indeed. Well, if the damage is already done, I could just stop the stream and start it again with uh, try to get the transcoding options back. Fix the clip DMCA issue? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me make one attempt to uh, to get it. You don't think that's worth it? Um, it if I can just if I switch the uplink to some, to another to another one, sometimes it works. Hold on. So let me try it once. I'll actually keep my recording going. I'll just stop streaming. Okay, this stream should be restarting now. And I got it back. Yay. Got it back. <laughs> Don't take it away from me again, Twitch. <laughs> yeah, transcoders are first come, first serve for affiliates. I'm not a partner, so it's not guaranteed, and I don't always get it. All right. <laughs> Just apply for a partner. I guess I, I should start thinking about that. Anyway. Anyway, what I was doing before all that stuff happened is I was going to try to um, see if I could just fill that in right here. So I can't match it against a specific type. Right, because um, you can't match the contents of slices, can you? Actually, A squared, the way I've heard it is um, it's really just a guideline and it's mostly geared towards um, Streamers in like gaming categories where there are a lot more viewers for science and tech. I've heard that you you can um, you can apply Sorry, there's just a lot of noise around me um, you can apply even if you don't have the concurrent viewers and they'll consider other things too I think I don't 
not sure I want to do though is this is not going to just handle connection closing. So I can actually put something here. I don't and just not care about the string and it would work, right? Yeah, okay, so that works now. But any that'll hit on any hit any kind of protocol error, right? All right, so um Yeah, man, there, that was just very loud. <laughs> I couldn't do any work for a second there. Um, let's see. What was I doing? I'm looking up tongues tonight is what I'm doing. Tongues tonight. Uh, rust. Wrist? Rust. Documentation. Um, error? Yeah, I guess they lump it into protocol. What's cow? Cow go moo? <laughs> it's a cow, I see. Yeah, that's what, that, I, I read, I saw that man, but I didn't know what you meant by cow. I guess it's a cow. A DREF conversion in the meantime. Yeah, you can no longer uh, threaten to switch to Mixer anymore, right? Can do if guard in the match. Yeah, but does it, is that is that really the, a good thing to do to match on that exact string? Is that really a protocol violation? An unexpected close without a handshake. I think that's a little bit strict. But I guess that's their implementation. If I don't like it, I'll have to write myself my own WebSocket library. Who would do that? <laughs> the second error? What? Oh, I see. You're talking about converting string cows to strings. Yeah, oh no, not again. Yeah, port my own WebSocket library to Rust because I don't like that there's no connection. Well, they have a connection close, but that's only if it closes normally. There's no um, abnormal close. I guess we can live with protocol violation. Cow is copy on write. It acts as an enum between slice and string owned and borrowed. Okay. How do we get to nightly, by the way? We're in the nightly. Shouldn't we be in stable? There we go. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> nightly is manga S. Scary. A clone on write smart pointer. It's a smart pointer providing clone on write. Oh, it's clone on write, not copy on write. Is there really monkey? Might start trying to learn this too. Things aren't so crazy. Hope you're having a good day, really monkey. Enclose and provide immutable access to borrowed data and clone the data lazily when mutation or ownership is required. Okay, that's interesting. So it, it supports the, um, what trait would that be? I guess it's borrowed. Oh, hold on. That's not a trait. Is it borrow B? Not exactly. Okay, I don't want to go too deep because I don't understand a lot of what I'm reading, and so it's sort of a waste of my time. 
but I get the gist of it. So it's a slice until we try to um, mutate it, and then it becomes an own string instead. Nightly is cool. Nightly is scary. <laughs> yeah, I need to be careful looking down these rabbit holes, right? Even though my avatar is a rabbit, we got to be careful. The Ray Rust releases continuous integration instead of Nightly is actually just as stable 99% of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's that 1% that always screws me over. <laughs> Yeah, I I want the stability guarantees. I'm I'm too old to have um an unstable tool set. <laughs> you know how it goes when my um when my uh, CMake broke, like that was that really messed me up that day. So um pinning it to one three one to avoid that issue. Now I'm now I'm terrified to um even touch this. Um and then this broke. And the fact that I can't even see what versions are I can install. I it makes me terrified to actually click that button. I don't even want to put the mouse over it because of that. Anyway, um, I guess we're accepting the fact that we're catching all protocol errors as a cl abrupt close, which kind of makes sense. If you get a protocol error, you'd probably want to close early. So then I don't need this, do I? Actually, what other errors would there be? Actually, there are no more errors, right? That handles everything else. Why did I even have that? I don't know why I had that. This this is exhaustive here. Can you return the protocol error? I don't want to return an error. This is going to um not return anything. I I I intentionally wanted to have this catch because it matches what I had in the um items script where we actually have a catch. Right, where is it? Actually, it's in common, right? Let's pin that one. Pin that one, please. Common. Yeah, I had um, a catch in in the original Python. So that's why I kind of wanted to catch everything here. Uh, we're doing a little bit more than the Python did. The original Python would have, um, since it's not catching that specific, it's only catching that specific thing and not everything else, technically it would panic. Um, actually, that is, actually is what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, so never mind. We're, I'm trying to make it um, match the Python as closely as possible in step one here. You can install nightly Rust side by side with stable. Easy switch global. That's okay. You know, I'll let other people work with the nightly build. I'm I'm perfectly fine working with my stable build. That's why you said second error. I see. Where did, when did you say second error? Oh. I see. Yeah. And I was only doing that because um, it wasn't catching this one, and that's how I learned it was protocol. So I probably don't need that anymore. So, um, well, here among other uh, protocol errors, um, so what? Just out of curiosity, what are the other kinds of errors? A TLS error, IO error, yeah, all of that stuff. Okay. Don't bother to handle any other kinds of errors. You can also do a second nested level of match for the protocol argument. Yeah, but then um, I don't want to have it tied specifically to the string they use because um, that's probably an implementation detail, not part of their interface, right? What I would have preferred is if they had an, an error specifically for abrupt close, because I do that in I do that in my in mine, and so does the Python, right? So if um, Python has it and my code has it, and Rust doesn't, it's a it's a deficiency. Yeah, it's a problem, but that's okay. You know, it, it, protocol errors are lumping in un, unexpected close. That's fine with me. <laughs> 
Yeah, especially if you have a different languages. That, so that string could be different depending on what language you're picking, right? So I don't need that error. Whoops. Okay, I hit that control minus again, which means I have to go fiddle with this again. I have to be careful not to do that. Because there's no way to make the font size, put the font size back through a shortcut to a, a decimal number. Okay, so don't hit control underscore, hit shift underscore. There we go. Can you unbind the zoom? Yeah, I should, probably should. That would be in um, binding key bind. Key map. Which one of these? Nope, not that one. This one. Zoom. Why are these both bound? Can I just clear it? Remove. There we go. Remove. Yeah, let's not... Let's not do that. If I need to zoom... If I need to change the zoom setting, we'll do it manually. We're going to delete all of these. There we go. Solved. Thank you for the idea, Buff Siegel. Yeah, I'm removing. I removed all the keybinds, and I don't ac accidentally do that again. Nice. It's like customizing your IDE to suit yourself. Okay, I'm getting too hung up on this. I need to take a break. <laughs> what am I going to do after the break, though? I need to um, do the next thing that we're doing um, for finding the items, right? So after we authenticate, we actually have to go in and actually look for items. So where did that happen? It was in the authenticate, right? It does this self work. So I'm not going to worry about the composition of the program and reuse yet. I'm just going to have it call, just go in and handle it. So um, on auth challenge should like, um, before calling OK, it should do its thing, right? So um, self dot um I find item I never did give it the um argument to, for the item we want though I should do that shouldn't I Okay Extract item, a uh, name of item to find from arguments. Sort of silly to have both of these comparisons, but it's because they're we're for different reasons, right? What did, how did I do this in the item script? Well, there's a command, but then after the command, um, inside of find items, we checked it right where is that find items no name given that's what it is still fighting with my keyboard as always okay and then we'll have args so um let um item name is Shift seven. <laughs> that, and then um, we'll just pass it here. So that context. Yeah. Hold on, how did I do that? Oh, it's the run. Okay, never mind. So run here is um, item name. Okay. I 
I'm going to want to put that in the context, actually. So mm, mm, let me not pass it into run then. Let's put it in the new. Context name. So new um, item name. We're going to want to... Um, actually, we can just hold on to a slice, right? And then I say... Um, item name is um, just that, right? Okay. Static, right? For now. <laughs> Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. If I use a non-static lifetime, I'll have to declare it somewhere, right? I'll have to declare it up here. And then I have to say, th is this how you do it? Um, or is it up, is it here instead? I can't remember this stuff. <laughs> Why am I using static? Because it's static right now. Actually, I guess it's not static. It's not static. I can't use static. It wouldn't have worked anyway. I'm grabbing it from the argument vector down here. So it can't be static. So I should just do it properly. I just forget the syntax here. Guess I should remind myself what it is. Yeah, that's the answer, Kamundi, but I need to re. I, whenever I forget something like this, I kind of want to go back to the book and see that section again. That was. Yeah, the, since this is a new thing for me, I always forget how to do this. And I always forget where it is in the book, too. Anybody remember the chapter it was in? It was like in five or six or something. I can't see it now. The uh, life, life, lifetimes. You can store a string. That's okay. Just search lifetimes. Yeah, but I have a. Tr I've, I've had trouble with the search bar. But that time it worked. Okay, it's chapter ten. All right. I'm just gonna go until I see it. Wow, they take a while before they actually introduce lifetimes. Am I in the wrong place? Yeah, I'm in the wrong place. They did until 10.3. Okay. Yeah, they're introducing it. Okay, so if it's the name of a function, it's attached to that. I just don't know how to do it with impulse yet. I just I don't want to just type in with Kamundi tell me because I'm not going to learn very well. It's like kind of like being given the answer to a homework problem. I um I want to actually get the learning part down. Okay, it makes sense that she put it for there for the name of a function. I guess I need... Oh, here we go. References might be tied to the lifetime of the references in the fields, and they might be independent. The lifetime parameter declaration after, after impulse and its user, the type name, are required, but we're not required to annotate the lifetime to the reference itself. Okay, so I... So... There's a reason why you attach it to both, right? And I forget what that is. Because you would think that you should only need to attach it to one or the other, but not both, unless they have different meanings. Yeah, the, I think the problem I have is this doesn't explain why it's needed on both. It just says it's required. But they don't say why. 
I wish that they would say why here. The first one declares the parameters, the second one uses them. So you could have it there, but not there if it's used in a context where it's not tied to the structure itself. In other words, I could say that. And the only reason this is invalid... Yeah, well, okay, if it's not allowed here, why don't they just add it? Maybe because I might have A and a static? Or I might have a B here? Okay, see, so this is where I, what I don't get. If they know what I should be putting there, why don't they do it themselves? <laughs> you can use it more than once. I see. Okay, thank you. So that now you've earned a point. <laughs> so it's I could use this like this, right? I can say um uh I don't know. Your example used like another another type. So if I had another type like I don't know, box. Oh, there's no int, right? I32. It's going to say I'm not using it, right? I guess box is a poor example, but I, I, I get the intent. Yeah, I know. I need to take a break. I have three minutes le left before Workrave complains to me. I'm going to take a break in a second. So, um, yeah, thank you for reminding me, Rally Monkey. Now, it doesn't like this Y. This reminds me of C++ errors. <laughs> Probably because um, these handlers have a different... Um, yeah, a different uh, con, a different life cycle, and this then would have to have um, like that. Would that? Did they have to be in all three places? Okay, now I have no idea what I'm doing. Change the return type to either context A or self of new. Uh, that And that would solve this mess up here? <laughs> Obviously I need to, I need to change this a little bit, right? I just don't know how to do that with a type alias. No, remove that. And that works because of what reason? It's just delighted. You're saying I need to have it here? Still have a problem. Um, probably because of this needs to be there too, right? Nope, now it's really confused. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so maybe I should just look and s have it tell me what exactly the um, error there is. Um, I'm not just going to make it string. I want it, I want it to work with slice. Okay, but I need to take a break. I have like 50 seconds before it really nags me. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a break for three, about three minutes. I'll be back in a bit.
Where is that button? There it is. <laughs> hey there, Anakin Luke. How are you doing today? I missed some other chatters. Let me go back up here. DHJ Human. I've seen a lot of recommendations to name lifetimes recently. Context instead of A. Yeah, I, sh I, I probably want to do that. I just wanted to get it quickly to compile. Then figure out what names uh, I pick. So I follow a... Um, Order of dev operations, which is to first make it work and then make it right. So I'm just trying right now to make it work. To make it right, I'll probably want to go back and make the context names um, more than just A. <laughs> Let's see, who else I need to say hi to? Luna Rartifus. Hello. Death Run 2. Death run to ran the today command a while ago. I'm sorry I didn't see that. Hello? And Metal Storm. I didn't acknowledge you either. I'm sorry about that. Back at 1016. Hey there, Metal Storm. Have I heard of learn X in Y minutes.com? No, I haven't heard of that. Would it help right now or should I just look at it later? I'll at least put it here under notes. Hey there, Slickver. Okay, scrolling back in chat a little bit. That beast pick is awesome. The beast isn't around, though. Like, that's where he usually would lurk, but he's not there right now. Looks like it was AA generated. No, I generated the beast pick by um, combing his fur back. He just looks so hilarious when I do that. I took a picture. For a function means that the function pointer has a generic lifetime. I don't understand what the for a function dot would mean. Let me um, see if I can understand. Is it trying to tell me that... Should this need, does this need to be um, A here? Or does that need to be here? Or here? No. They're all wrong. I think it has to do, it has to do with the, the, with the lifetime though. Expected concrete lifetime found bound lifetime parameter. I don't understand the syntax for for. Does it support markdown and comments? I know that if you do the triple comment that um that this is a doc a, a documentation comment. If you put that in the context of like functions, you can you run doc generators, similar to Doxygen. Function is a lighted form of signature for function. Okay, I never read about that, Kamundi. So you're saying that I need to um, make this a for a function? And then what? I need to use a here? And then try self on oath challenge self here. Self. So it still says it's mismatched. Are we getting the same error though? Expect a concrete lifetime, found lifetime parameter A. Is that be still because this is wrong up here? That's still wrong? Like, for example, do I need to say A here? Nope. 
or do I need to do the turbo fish syntax? I don't remember this. Okay. Does that need to be here? Nope. <laughs> I'm really confused what I need to do. So that should work, right? But it doesn't because it's giving me a, a something that I don't, don't understand, which is saying that it expects a concrete lifetime found bound lifetime parameter A. I don't understand why it says it found a... Okay, you can't even see that because my face is in the way. Found bound lifetime parameter A. Uh, there is no A, A here. So I don't know why it found that unless it's elided from the fact that it's inside of an impl A. In that case, the um, handler is defined wrong, right? That's my guess, is that this this is wrong somehow. Hey there, Mr. Halsey. How are you doing today? Hoping to see more, but it's almost 3 a.m. here. Okay. C-A-D-H-G, home on. Thank you for being here. I'm wondering if this error is just because of the previous errors or if there's something else I did wrong here. Oh, actually, that is, this is wrong. Um, that is some code I haven't finished writing yet. I think I need to give I need to give a lifetime when I make these po function pointers, but I don't know how to do that. Yeah, there's the full error. Oh, there's two of them, right? Mismatch types. Expected concrete lifetime. Found bound lifetime parameter A. Expected that with four parameters with the A in there. Found one without it. So it got to light it out. I think I need to, in here, specify the A lifetime. But I don't know how to do that right now. So I guessed that it would be something like that. And that didn't work. So then I I guess I could put it here. And that didn't work. I put it here. Nope, I could put it here. None of those work. So I don't know how, what the right syntax is to... Um, to provide that. I didn't know about that, Mr. Halsey. Keep the compiler from barfing too early? Okay. <sighs> Hit Control C instead of Control V. There we go. Can I actually explicitly provide a light for parameter and expression? See your comment above. Change handler and context to handler A. And the handler typer to be generic type handler. Change handler in context. So you're saying to do that? But it doesn't like that syntax. Unless I need to change handler also. Okay, so I you want me to do that. But then it doesn't like that. <laughs> oh, it's already in scope, so I don't need to do that? Is that what it's trying to tell me? Ooh, that did it. Come on, Dee, you're you're amazing. And so is Silmeth. Okay, now let me see. I need to understand what happened there. Let me give you some points but I need to get the learning down. I can't just be given the answer to the homework problem, right? I need to have an understanding of what the heck I just did. 
I don't really understand this. I think the problem is we need to say that the handler has the same life lifetime as the context. Because the handler is a pointer to a con to a function that has the same context. Yeah, I think I sorta of get it, but the syntax is sort of weird. The hash map lives in the context, yeah. So it's basically saying that these pointers, their lifetime is the same lifetime as the context. And in order to do that, we have to we have to use that syntax to make that match. Yeah, these the that combined with um that allows me to do um this. Right? So I guess I don't need to say a lifetime here because we already provided it here. Right? Yeah, okay. I, I sort of get it, but I'm still weak on the syntax. Anyway, it works. At least I think it's going to work, although uh, there looks like that we have further errors down here. Uh, probably because this doesn't have a lifetime specified, right? Yep. That's it. So this should build now, right? Except for I never used the item name, which I need to use because I'm going to need that soon. So the item name um, is up here, right? In the new, I needed to store it in there. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's where I'm using it. Oh, right, I'm never using it. <laughs> never mind. Okay, let's use it. So I need to do like um self dot um well need to give it a name. What do we do after auth challenge? So um actually we're not just reviewing the work. I need to update this. So um uh sending a server request to find an item but i need to give the thing a name and i wanted to make it kind of like what how did i do it in the python here uh where where am i looking i think it's work is what i'm what i'm um need to call it because that's what i called it in python so self work And then work needs to be a function. And in the work for items, that is up here, right? So it does another lookup because the Python had multiple uh, commands you could do. But the find items was find items. So that's this. And we already got the argument, so it's really just this. This is the work function. That's the Python code that we started with. So yeah, we have to have a state because the state is used to know um, how to respond to the server. So we need to have a state variable. Um, I suppose we should just make that a full-blown enum, right? Now, can I de define s types within types? Can I say, like, um, enum state? I don't think it's going to let me do that, is it? Yeah, I don't, think it, I don't think it will. So I'll probably need to give it a full name, like context state. Something like that. How come this is all giving me problems? Because I haven't initialized it? Okay, well, we need to give it values like um, fetch items and then this should be um, well 
what what is it in python what's the state initialized with that would be in the init none okay none so then um state is context state colon colon none all right Declaration of HashMap string handler basically means I promise I'll call the functions from HashMap only with my context. Yeah, that makes sense. That's actually what I want. It's inferred from the type of the HashMap. Make string in HashMap also... Can we do that? Because I was inserting them... Um, where was I doing that? I need to remember. It was in the in the construction here, right? So I can do that if I make them static lifetime. But um, I think I left I left them as strings because they I wanted to support being having them added dynamically. It doesn't need to own the hash map keys if they're always static like that. So I could have said this, right? I could have said um, ah. Sorry, I'm struggling with my ed editor. I could have said that if I make this a um, static string, right? Now it'll work again until I do the lookup down here. Well, let's comment that out. So that that actually works, right? We just get warnings emitted. Actually, there are a couple of warnings here to look at. That's just things that are never used and never constructed. All oh, right, because I didn't construct that. Yeah, so that works, but it only works for um, static lifetime, right? If I did that, it's probably going to throw a fit because it doesn't know the lifetime of it. Yeah, missing. So I have to have some kind of lifetime. So I could do that with A again, right? Now, as long as this lives at least as long as the context itself, we're good. But let's say um, I wanted to... Um, let's say I wanted to insert a handler and the, the key I had is not going to live as long as context, then, then I'd have to... Um, I actually don't even know how I would do that. <laughs> Maybe I can just wait until I need to do that. So this would probably be better, right? Just to say, I need, a sl I need to put a slice. It needs to live at least as long as the context. And it's okay right now because they're static lifetime. You can add them dynamically if the strings are all okay before you write. Exactly. Yeah, I could use the cow thing. I just didn't know about cow beforehand. Moo! <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, the, maybe that's the idea. Maybe I just need to get familiar with that. Besides the cow mooing, it's copy on, it's clone on write. So I'm not going to use that yet, but let me make a note of that to look at later. So study in more detail the cow moo type for use in, in places where, um, where we're given an object, an immutable object, which we may um, need to mutate later. Right, move, copy and write. Well, no, it's clone on write, middle storm. I think that words are important there because copy implies transfer of ownership clone implies making an actual copy uh, making an actual um second object and so um i was looking at that and it's in um rust manual it's clone on write because they're actually um cloning the data lazily so it's not just doing a, a, a copy in rust implies that it is um uh well, actually what does copy imply and copy implies it's moved right Maybe I don't have my terms right. 
I know clone means something different from copy, because there's the copy trait. The trait, where is the trait copy? Is that here? Types whose values can be duplicated simply by copying bits. So that's what copy usually implies in Rust, right? But but that's not what the cow does. It doesn't copy the bits. It um, actually makes, it allocates memory. Copies, yeah, yeah, got it. So I need to remember that that's important, that cow is not copy on write, it's clone on write, because we're not copying the bits of the, um, the B. We are actually making an, we are actually allocating memory by cloning it whenever mutation or ownership is required. So in my case, it would be if ownership is required, right? So I think I'm comfortable enough with this to do it. Let's get some practice. So it's like we need it to have that lifetime. If it's not, then we would um, get it by doing a, um, a cow of A. And it's... Um, It would just be that, right? Hold on. No reference there? But then we would what? Want... Ah, uh, that... There's no name there. There we go. And cow is in... Borrow. Is that not brought into the... It's not brought in by the prelude. So I'm not doing uses because um, I need, I want, I want to cement in, like, I need to know where it comes from. So that helps me remember where it comes from. You want to use static and cow? No, I don't need it to lo live longer than the context. So I'm just going to have it limited to this, to the scope I need it in. Why would I want it to be static? Used to the more standard acronym outside of Rust? Ah, uh, yeah, Rust, so Rust is very specific. Because if A would work, you would not need cow. Um, maybe I don't understand something then. If I don't understand how cow works. Let me see the example here. These examples don't actually don't use explicit lifetimes. Here, this one does. You know, see, they they're doing what I'm what I was planning to do. The idea with using cow static string would be: I want to use either a string literal or a runtime allocated string. But what I'm trying to say here is I want to use either a slice that lives as long as the context, and if it doesn't live that long, I want to make my own and um, and manage it, a runtime allocated one. I think that's what I'm trying to say here. The key needs to either have at least a live as long as the context, or we're going to um, allocate memory for it. Okay, just make I want to make sure that, because so far today I've demonstrated my um how how much of a noob i am in rust so i basically am going to ch continue duck typing until um the experts here tell me that i'm okay <laughs> and if i don't get it right um i'm trying to come I'm, i don't want to just accept the answers because that's kind of like i'm not going to get the learning if that makes sense if you have a slice that doesn't live long enough you clone it and put it in cow and then it's cow which fits all possible lifetimes but I don't really need it to live longer than the context anyway, right? So isn't that over, over restricting the type, I guess? Like in other words, if the, if the slice is already, if the slice given already is um, limited to A, I don't need to make a clone of it. So this should just work, no it doesn't. Is it because I need it to be, um, a reference. 
No, there's something qu not quite right here. Is it reference to string? Nope. Okay, there's something that's still not right, because that should have worked, right? Do I actually have to put it into a cow myself? I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> do I really have to do that? Cow from off challenge? Aw. Okay, well, fine. It would have been sweet if it figured that out for me, and then, of course, I have to say it's from that namespace, so it's just going to... It's going to prompt me to want... All this overhead is going to prompt me to want to use use. Into. So, in other words, so you can say auth challenge into. Okay, I much prefer that one. Thank you, Kamundi. Now, let me understand what that actually did. Performs the conversion. That sounds like black magic to me. I need to look into what that means. Is it just type... Um, what's the word? It knows that it needs one of that, and so it inferred the type of that. It looks really black magic y to me. Into what, right? Let me try to understand how this works. So, into. Is it just contextual? Core convert into. Okay. Am I going to find that in this list? Core convert into. There we go. A value to value. This is the wrong thing. Uh, I need the lowercase one. I guess not. I, I actually was okay looking at this. A value to value conversion that it consumes the input tree the opposite of from. One should avoid implementing into implement from instead. Implementing from automatically provides one with an implementation of into. Okay, so if we're implementing it, we don't need to do it because f doing from implements it for us, the into for us. Prefer using into over from when specifying trait bounds on a generic function to ensure the types that only implement into can be used as well. This trait must not fail. If you, if you want it to be able to fail, do try into. Okay, got it. Okay, that's a caveat about imp about older rust string implements into vector so I, i'm guessing it's that cow implements into also that's how it works right i don't actually see them using into into a cow we're turning things into cows here today apparently <laughs> yeah, cow t implements into t because like they said up here that um, implementing from automatically provides one with an implementation of to into thanks to the blanket implementation in the standard library. So we're turning things into cows today. Did you hear that? I'm turning things into cows today. Well, she can't answer because she's in class. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're turning things into cows over here. Um, did you know this actually changes something into a cow? Moo! Changes the slice into a cow. <laughs> Okay, yeah, the, 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 this is sort of just a weird thing to see, but I can, it's, it's because that the compiler knows this insert and that the type of the K was, um, does it actually say it there? It, it knows that the handlers 
the key is of type cow of a string within the lifetime of a and so it knows that into it's going to look at that type to see can we turn this slice into a cow of a slice into a cow slice <laughs> used to foo not moo okay well look so far not my favorite features number five no number four was exclusive terseness and in, in terms uh, 4a should be except for cow because we love cows moo it's part of my name how you pronounce my name anyway we love cows yeah so i just made an exception to that rule all right i love it cow I can totally get behind cow. So I, all these, it might seem silly that I'm saying these things and writing these things down, but they are helping me cement the idea of what a cow is. It's a clone on write. So basically we can pass any kind of slice from any kind of lifetime. And if it doesn't fit the, um, the lifetime of the context, it, we end up getting it cloned for us. So it's a lazy cloning. I love it. Okay. So we're not using fetch items. I'm going to do that down here. Um, this needed to be, um, well, we're doing self-work. It needs to have a semicolon there. That was, was mis That's what was missing before. And self-work is going to do self.state equals um, context state fetch items. And then um, we're sending a message. So I had a... Where was that where we sent a message? Right up here. Yep. Do this down here. So we're going to, um, do I have a WebSocket in the context or do I, need, do I need to pass that in? I don't. Okay. So then we need to give, be given that WebSocket. Where is that? This. Down here. And I need a self to... That's just mutt self. We're all mutts here. Um, self. Okay, and then... Um, so we're going to write a message. And this time we're writing a message, get entities by component type. And component type is item. And then... Um, I don't actually need to handle that there right hold on let me see how i would do this this handler returns um so we could just have it be that as long as we return the result from the work so that's what i'm going to do and then um yeah how did i handle this up here This one. Oh, this is the wrong error, too. Shoot. I got that wrong. Um, it was protocol, right? Yeah. So I can't actually kind of want that. And then this needs to be past the web socket by reference, right? No, it already is a reference. Okay, got it. Okay, so then down here... Oh, I copied too much. Dang it. Go back up. I just want what's inside of here. Down here. That. Uh, what does it not like about this? Oh, um, no, that's correct, right? Is it that I don't have a semicolon there? That was it? No semicolon, the whole thing's bad. Okay, so I need to do an okay at the end. We get to there. There we go. How was work accessing self? Yeah, it wasn't until I gave it, um, I put, until I put it there. You could put the WebSocket into the struct. Yeah, but I didn't do that in the Python, so I didn't want to do it here either. So in the Python, in this context, the WebSocket was just passed around rather than holding on to it. It, maybe it makes sense to redesign this. Why does it say that? Anyway, um, but I want to try to keep, stay faithful to what I had in the Python, which is that we have the stop 
Uh, start we don't have ported yet because I'm not using it, but um, the ad I have stopped the admin key and that's it, right? Stop. Oh, okay, I had state also. It's not shown here because it's in the derived context. Yeah, right here. State. Are we also copying the arguments? Should I have done that? Two. Anyway, the WebSocket's missing here, so I was leaving it out. But it might it probably makes sense to, to hold on to the WebSocket here as well, right? But we'll do that later. I wish I could make this a little bit um like this code is duplicated. How would I um I I guess I would make a function that wraps sending a message and then turning the um that um what is it? Turning that result into the proper kind of result. Yeah. If let error. I don't know what you mean, 715209. You could also just make a function that accepts the result. That accepts the result. Really, I did, really the um, part that's redundant is this part. It's And it's really just translating the um, one result into another. So... Let's give it a name, I guess. Um, write message, yeah, something like that. Yeah, we can do that. Or send message. Let's do it. Function. So shouldn't it be fun? Because functions are fun. It's a fun. Send message. We don't need the self, actually, do we? So it's just the WebSocket and the message to send and um that's just going to be a sir to json so uh message reference to sir json value okay and then i'm just going to basically it's not going to be a match it's going to it's going to be what what you guys were telling me to do right or will it be a match I don't even need to do an error here, do I? Really, it's just consuming that kind of error or panicking. I need to have this return of result where we don't, we actually don't care about what's in the error. And it didn't like this Y. Mismatch types. Oh, because um, that is like that. There we go. Yep, I got it. Thank you, a lunar artifice. Okay, so man is saying map error. I don't, okay, that's, some, that's something that's new, I guess. The U is silent. So it's fun, fun. <laughs> you can just do if let, yeah. Okay, this map error is something new, so let's look, let's look it up. Map error. That's, it. That's actually exactly what I want, right? By applying a function if a to a contain error, leaving OK untouched, that's exactly what we want. So let me try to do it without looking at that answer that was given in chat. Actually, this is still wrong? What's this telling me? Hold on. So telling me? Expected enum result found that. Explicitly returns as his body has no tail or return. I thought it did. Is it because of that? Do I actually have to say return that? And that could just be that, right? Yeah, this has to be okay that okay <laughs> i don't think it it actually matters oh 
the problem probably wasn't the the return there. It could just be a tail that like that, right? Okay. So I, let me just actually use it so I don't get this weird squiggly. So to use it, I would just say um, I'd just do a question mark, wouldn't I? The question mark operator? Oh, actually, no. I would just do an unwrap, wouldn't I? No, 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 no. I th I think I do need to do the question mark. It would be um, self... Actually, it doesn't take a self, does it? It's just um, context send message. Um, and the... Me yeah, WebSocket, sure. That is... Um, this part I need to actually put the message up here don't I that's um, message to string and then um, that's this here and then don't I just do question mark there oh, what's wrong with this one Oh, I need to do, uh, yeah, please borrow that. <laughs> That's cool. That's basically it's, it's, if it's not okay, you return, um, the error, right? Let me, um, read about that again. Where would that be in the manual? Just question mark. Unwraps the result or propagates its error, right? Well, yeah, I actually wanted the operator. How do we get to the operator? Ops? Uh, well, that's a weird thing. Yeah, I think I got it. I think I understand it, right? That will um, return the error if it's an error. Otherwise, it just unwraps and returns the unit, which um, we don't do, need to do anything with. Yeah, but we're going to we're gonna be doing more stuff here, right? Actually, I guess we're not, so you're right. I can just say that. And we're done. We're done. If I needed to do more work after sending the message, though, I would do that. And then um, proceed to do other stuff, right? But I don't need to, so there we go. Nice. Okay, so do I want to run this and see what we get? Why not? This will be fun. So, um... build it still getting oh because the item name is is not used hold on uh, oh right, because that's not until later yeah okay so um is there an easy way to flip to the other command shell no name given that's right we need to find rusty iron key and i i hacked the um authentication thing to test it so i need to remove that hack that was this line here. Docs for the deprecated try macro that you just looked at explain what the question mark does. Got that at question mark operator after it had the try macro. Oh, I see. So you're saying up here. I didn't know about the raw identifier syntax. That's kind of cool. So if you really wanted to name something FN, you would do R pound sign FN. Hmm. Let the bat use cargo run. Cargo, cargo road, not cargo run. <laughs> So it's a basically equivalent, right? Yeah, okay. It's equivalent to the question mark operator. Yeah, see, it, um, it actually got the entities it asked for back. So that's the next step. So we're moving on.
Should check this in so far? Should probably check it in. Mm, yeah, update to do's. And add, yeah, we'll just make these different check ins. Update to do's. Add stream note about uh, porting Python tools to Rust. Okay, let me check some of this stuff in separately. So, this, I'm just going to check in the fact that we removed all of these um, comments. Okay. Mm. Technically, I removed these lines and removed these lines. And then I removed all of these lines. How many of those? All of them, including that. Right? And then I removed those, and I removed these. And then I removed all of this. No, not the OK line. Fact, it's only these lines I technically removed in this change here. Um, maybe the other one too. Yeah, we'll remove that one too. And then this. And that. Whoops. Oh, dang it. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> It staged the whole um, the whole um, hunk there. I guess I have to look at this now. This should only have documentation, oh, like the comment removal. Okay, so unstage those lines. We're just this commit is just going to be removing commented out. So this is the one I didn't mean to do. Unstage those. And unstage those. So this is just comment removal. I don't want to stage this yet. Unstage those lines. Okay. So the only things that should be removal of comments here. Looks like it. Okay. So um, remove commented out code. Actually, it's commented out code and extra explanations during learning. Still in version control if we want them. Okay, and then this one is um, several changes. This is work in progress. Uh, imp um, porting the uh, find items command. So this is um, well no need to own a own the keys of the handlers unless unless they um were inserted unless the ones inserted wouldn't live as long as the context okay and then that was basically all that stuff and then um Right, so um, handle all WebSocket protocol errors as unexpected um, disconnects. And then what else? It was actually sending the message, right? Oh, and I'm, I need to use the send message in the other place too. So um, send message to server requesting item, we're requesting all items. Well, after authenticating, send message there. That's what, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I need to actually commit those things or stage them. Uh oh, LF replaced by CRLF. I should fix that. Yep, CRLF, please. Thank you very much. 
that that would come as no difference, right? Yeah, no difference. All right. Okay, so then um, I want to use that... Uh, oh, that was left in there. That was a bug before. Right, so I, I want to... Um, what do I want to do? I want to use the send message up here. So that's just... Um, context send message ws and then like that right and then the message is this right here you can borrow that so we get rid of all this stuff cool and that should be the only place where we see um a write message now now there's one more but it's in a different context here. I need to do something differently. Actually, this is this was wrong anyway. Um, this needed to be protocol. That. Um, what do we want to do here? It's actually the same then, isn't it? Well, we want to actually print that line here. So then it's slightly different, right? I still want to do um, a context send message. And that's the message there. But instead of doing a question mark, I actually want to do um, an if let, right? If let um, error equals, then print the message, right? Did I get it right? Did I? Did I get it right? I think I did. Hydrate. I actually need to take a break to use the restroom, but... Cheers, Nui. And I can't pet the cat, but I will um, do what your message said, 715209. Did you hear the cat meowing? Yeah, he's trolling. He's, he's lurking around, meowing. It's much nicer than the old try, yeah. This syntax is, I, it took me a little bit to get wrap my brain around that, but I like this. It basically is, is saying, it's you have to read it from right to left. We're going to send the message, and if we get an error back, do that. That's what that's saying. And we need to actually, um, it owns the web socket, so we need to borrow it. How did I get this one wrong? Oh, it needs to be mutable. That was in the original code, right? Mute. Yeah, it was in the original one. Okay, just checking. Oh, did I, um... Okay. I didn't mean to, uh... I didn't mean to take those points from you. Um, was that Nui who told me to pet the cat? <laughs> um, I can go find the cat just so I can make it up to you. Hold on a second. Since he's probably around here somewhere. Oh, he's actually right there. Okay, we'll do better than I normally do. Just show you show you guys me petting the cat. Here, say hi. Say hi to chat. <laughs> so I'm petting the cat while holding him. There we go. He's gotten pets. That'd be, you be good. <laughs> the beast, yeah. He was just standing over there on the carpet. Did Twitch change the channel points formula to sub-tier determine the multiplayer? Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I need to take a break to use the restroom, so it's a good time as any because I cleaned up this code and um, it should build without any warnings now. Okay, we're still not using the item name. Right, that's coming up next. But this should still work um, as far as it's getting the entities back. So I'm going to take a break to use the restroom and um, come back and continue working on this. Hydrate the toilet. We'll do seven one five two oh nine. All right, another three minute break. I'll be right back.
I'm sorry, how long was that at zero? <laughs> how late was I? Hopefully not that long. Maybe I need to make it four minutes. You had to fully restart VSC to get the Rust plugin to work and not produce fake errors. Not even reloading the server or entire window worked? That's weird. Scary when that sort of thing happens. Okay. So, let's update the current task. So now we're um, processing item, well, item information, item info from server to find, to find one. There we go. That's what we're doing. I switched to, um, what did I switch to? RLS Analyzer. Um, I haven't gone back to try RLS plus Rust Analyzer because there's that third configuration you can try, right? I haven't tried that yet. The one thing I liked about um, the Rust Analyzer is that um, I get the um, the run and debug, especially for unit tests, which is nice. Now to benchmark and make it fast. Finally got your program to work. Good job, Buff Seagull. Tests. But tests are easy. You just do... Um, I forget I don't forget the exact syntax, but it's built into Rust, right? In fact, I should probably be doing it here. <laughs> okay, um, so what I need is to go to this... Uh, to the table of... Um, to the handlers, right? I need to add another handler. So context handlers insert um, entities into context on entities. And we need to make that a handler. So it's going to look like one of these other handlers on entities. Okay, now what are we going to do with those entities? Uh, where do we actually handle that? Oh, right here, on entities. So it's on fetch items that we're doing it. Okay, so this is the code that I want, right? And actually, I don't want all of this. I want to just do the item has matching name. So anyway... This is the code reporting. So I'll comment it out. Okay, so to extract that, I want to, um, and we're going to expect it to be an object. See if I can do this from memory again. It's going to be, um, technically, we're gonna panic because if if it's if if we uh, if that's not a JSON object that we can iterate because I don't have a try catch here for that. Oh, C seventeen R. Hello, forty minutes and no wave. You got a dad joke and everything. I missed it. Oh, I see the greetings program. Sorry about that. You probably came in right when I was um, focused on getting something to work, right? Did I guess it? Also, I didn't say to or driven. I didn't say hi to or driven. Hello. And the toys. When did that happen? 11 o'clock. 40 minutes ago. Wow. Which plugins for Rust do you use in my VS Code? If you're still here, the toys, the plugin I use is Rust Analyzer. And for the debugger, we learned this morning that the... Uh, Code LLDB is the preferred one for Rust because it doesn't freak out with uh, slices like the um, C, C++ does. So that's the two that I'm recommending now for, for now until I learn better. It's Code LLDB and uh, Rust Analyzer. With some caveats, right? So Rust Analyzer, if you use that, you need to have a top-level camel. Uh, cargo tomel, I mean. And I put it right here just to 
if your project in Rust is not in the root directory, then you need one of these workspaces. Otherwise, Rust Analyzer doesn't work. So I had it um, because it's a mixed language workspace. The only thing in Rust right now is in that directory. So the top level file just points the Rust Analyzer to where the project is. And if you had more projects, you just have more in the list. So um, it points us to this project, which is what we're working on today. So those are the two plugins that we're using for Rust. Okay, so then uh, let me just review what I did for the other handler up here. It was this, right? We get a string. If it was a string, we would get it. Uh, but we want an object in this case, right? What did I do for that down here, right? As object, unwrap. That's exactly what I want. So I want um, message entities as object unwrap, and that is uh, entities. So let entities equal that. And then we're going to iterate them. So let's see if I get this right. <laughs> Do they, is it in? Can I just do that? I think so. Do I need to do iter here? Oh, that's if I want the string, which I do. I want that. I don't think so. Actually, this is going to be as um as an array. So then this is just a value. And without iterating it, what is it? It's also a value. So does it really matter if I do an iter here or not? Iter is if... It runs an iterator over over the slice. Hold on. And if I don't do that, it still works. Hmm. Please install trusty rusty snippets. Do I you want me to do that right now or can I do that later? Which dumb Rust plugin sucks? The RLS one? You're using RLS, right? Or did you say? I don't even know if you said which one you're using. <laughs> for in calls into iter. So it, it does it for me, in other words. Yeah, I'm just using Rust Analyzer. Just using that one right now. I played with RLS, and it was okay, but it was missing something. What was it? It was missing something. I can't remember what RLS was missing. Well, RLS, I, actually, not RLS. Is, I, yeah, I, I mean the Rust plugin. There's the Rust plugin, and I was using that before, but it was missing something. I have it disabled right now. I can't remember why I disabled it. <laughs> it didn't have the buttons, but there was also something that just didn't work right with it. I can't remember what it was. Into iter can be different from iter depending on the type. Yeah, so for an array, it's not... That makes sense. Yeah, I remember like, yeah, if I just do object, this is not correct, but it, now this will give me a tuple and iter doesn't. Is that right? No, they both give me a tuple. Okay, I I think I want to look this up because I want to understand it a little bit better. What is iter actually do? That's a module. I want the... um. Oh, iter is um, a trait. Wait. Is that what I'm supposed to be looking at anyway?
Usually iter iterates over references. Into iter consumes, yeah, to makes it into an iterator. It's just a convention, not a trait, for a function that returns a borrowing iterator. See, that, I, guess that, I guess I'm confused because the book actually uses iter, and I thought they explained the reason why, but I didn't maybe get it at first. Uh, where is the... There it is. Okay, I guess th this is the section we want. Go to the beginning of that section. There we go. Yeah, they actually create one. Oh, that's if you want to create it yourself. Yeah, so they create one and then they use it with the four. My question would be, why do, why do they need that? Why can't they just say four val in V1? There's got to be a reason why, right? What's up? Don't break the rule. Why are you spamming names of people in chat? Is that a joke on iterating? <laughs> oh, I see. So it were just this borrows it, but if I did four val in v one, it would actually consume the vector. Oh, it's the same as if you took a reference. So if I did a four val in reference to v one, it would also borrow and not consume it. So then why? Why do they teach it this way? Just to reinforce what you're getting is an iterator object? Yeah, but um, couldn't you just do for val in a and v1? Why do you, we wouldn't need to do the iter or the into iter, would we? Or am I not understanding that? Methods that consume the iterator. Oh. A little more explicitly? Okay, we'll look at that. Let's look at that, because I want to understand it a little bit better. So don't break the rule. You still didn't explain what, the, what that chat was about. I'd like to know. Are you just trolling or not? Because if you're just trolling, then please don't. But if... If it was a joke or something, I'd like to know what it was about. <laughs> Used to be in the past that I would just kind of ban people who did strange things like that, but uh, Chris Griffin actually raised a good point to me that um, just banning people outright a lot of the times doesn't solve things. Just treating people like people is is a, maybe a better thing. So if I if I could understand what Don't Break the Rule wanted and treat them like a, a person, maybe um, things would work out better. Okay, so let's see. Right, this is right. But you'll notice something you would never call anything in the vector. What gives? There's a trait con for converting something into iterator into iterator. This has one method which converts a thing into an iterator. Okay, it's calling it for me. I see. All iterators implement into iterator just by just returning themselves. If you're writing an, an iterator, you can use it with the for loop. If you're creating a collection and implementing into iterator for it, will allow your collection to be used in the for loop. Okay. So I guess you guys are right. It's just an older syntax. I don't really have to say iter. I can just say that. Okay. Yeah. So this is just sug syntactic sugar for getting an iterator out of that and then looping through it, right? This actually does a loop with next and all that junk. It's the same thing in Lua, by the way. The uh, That kind of syntax in Lua is just syntactic sugar for a, a loop where you're calling next on the iterator until it reaches the end. Rust analyzer is so much better, really? <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to guess Don't Break the Rule is a bot. And I, it, um, I am going to ban that bot. But if you're not a bot, feel free to message me later and explain what you were doing in chat earlier. Bot, uh, unauthorized bots are not allowed here. All right, so... All right, cool. What are we doing in the Python? We're looking at its entity and components, and find is going to see if it has a matching name. I'm going to do the same thing here. So we'll have, um, do we actually need the entity number? We don't, so I can skip that part, I guess. Oh, I see what this did. It found all of the um, items that matched. And then it would... Um, right, because there could be more than one item. Okay, I got it. So we're going to end up making um, a vector of entities. Actually, it's a mapping. It's a hash map. So let's do that. Yeah. That's what I understood too. Rust Analyzer is like what Rust is going to go to. The Rust extension, that is. Or the, the RLS. It's items that I wanted, right? Items is a standard collections hash map from... Um, I hate to use in 32 but I'm going to do it in this case. To um, SERD JSON value which is going to be owned by the collection we'll move it in because we can okay and then i just need to make a new one right standard collections hash map new all right and then down here we're going to actually put it pull it in so but in a similar way, we're going to use a um, a delegate. So if self dot uh, snake case. Components. And we can move it in, sure. Then, actually, no, this is going to borrow it. Borrow the component. I haven't gotten components out yet. Um, right, so self items. Oh, yeah, we need to get the entity too. And we'll do the move thing. Uh, oh, we're getting just the item component out. Okay, so equals components item arrays only have standard tree implementations for lengths to 32 really okay <laughs> weird so let entity equals entity info entity As they don't have an i32 that's 64? That's weird. Okay, well, we're using 64s then. So up here, u64. Because sir doesn't let me pull it in as uh, anything less. Unwrap. Okay, let um, components, it's entity info components. as object unwrap and this doesn't exist yet but we'll have to make it so all right so then um i guess we're adding it here doesn't need to mutate self 
it has to have um there's a lot of chat going on right now am i missing something <laughs> you're just helping each other out in rust right working on stabilizing const generics you're in nightly i see see there you go a squared <laughs> move to stable like me <laughs> this is this is uh answering the question from before about why i am in stable and not nightly <laughs> yeah i got it yeah all right i'm not used to having people have a lively discussion in my chat usually my chat is very slow okay so then um it's the name right well it's components I forget what's the context of this it's given the components right so then it's given a in it's borrowed reference to a third we have to put the name in front right um components borrowed reference to a, a json value it's actually specifically an object how do i say that it's specifically a map a string to value do they have a a type alias for that they should shouldn't they okay well anyway i'll do that And that returns a bool. True. Just to make sh sure I get this to compile. Okay, and that doesn't work. Why? Really? It needs to borrow a U64? Move occurs because... Of, all right, I need to make it mutable because we're going to mutate it by ripping out its item component. No? That's a lot of highs to C17R. <laughs> Constra generics sounds way beyond my pay grade right now. Okay. It does need to be mutable because I actually want... Oh, I need to say... Um, as... Oh, no. I, I, no, this is a value, right? Can't I own it by moving it in like that? It's not letting me do it because it's on the stack, right? So I have to... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to say two owned or something like that. So why doesn't it like this left-hand side, though? Oh. Modify indexed content. So I can't do that? Hmm. Well, that's a bummer, because that's semantically what I want. You're saying I have to do the insert. That's fine. Is there no insert? Hold on. Am I just misspelling it wrong? Misspelling it? <laughs> yeah, I'm just misspelling it. Okay, the key is entity, and that's the value, so... I prefer to do the assignment, but, you know, if that's okay. If it doesn't support it, it doesn't support it, right? And let me guess, it doesn't need a reference. There we go. And this didn't need to be mutable because we're... Um, doing too owned. It's too bad I can't rip out a piece of that. But I understand it's because this is all um, borrowed. Yeah, it's all bar. If it wasn't borrowed, we could get away with taking it out, right? Moving it out. 
Except for lifetimes. That's the problem, right? Yeah, it would have to be mutable, and it would have to be... Uh, it has to live longer than... Yeah, so it makes sense that I'd, I'd want to get an owned copy there anyway. Yeah. I understand. C++ covers that ugliness by doing the default construct. Yep, I understand. They get that plugin to show errors without building? Um... That's just something that the uh, the Rust Analyzer does. I have to hit save, yeah. Um, so if I don't hit save, it doesn't show me the error. But when I hit save, it shows me there's an error there. Um, the other extension, the, just the Rust one, actually shows you the errors immediately without you having to hit save. But it has its own problems, right? <laughs> It's your thing lagging because you're remote developing? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I, I get the error as soon as I hit save. And it will also show it under problems. Well, it shows under problems, and if you highlight it, it shows... I think that's the way problems work in VS Code, though. Yeah. Okay, but that's what I want. That matches this so far. And then after we loop, then I'm going to call another thing, find... Find items after items fetched. Yeah, just tr try to stay faithful to the um, Python, but then we're going to probably refactor this later. Yes. So I'm not going to need a WebSocket, right? Not going to need that WebSocket. And so this is just going to call the other function so self dot uh, find items after items fetched technically I don't need any any arguments we just need to make this another function all right let's do it self is the only thing I need all right, and let's pull that in from the Python. And this is what it does. There's the original Python. So it iterates all the items and just prints them. So we would just do the same thing, right? For um, entity item in self.items. Oh, right, I have to do the reference to borrow it. Yep, I borrow you. There we go. Name is item get n. Okay, so then um, the equivalent of that would be let uh, name equal um, item dot... Now, item is a value, right? So it needs to be... Um, I need to do as um, object... And then there's the thing I learned the other day, right? It was, um, and then. No, it wasn't and then. This is why I keep a notebook. <laughs> what did I learn last time? Did I not write it down? I might not have written it down. I should write this stuff down. Yeah, I didn't write it down. Uh, but it's probably in here somewhere. Like, it's like, and... Maybe it is end then. Okay, or else. Yeah, I think that was it, right? It's just I have to make it into um, a closure. Yeah, at the end, I'll unwrap it, right? Or actually, no, I'm not going to unwrap it. It's going to be or else um, empty string. So then the end in here the parameter would be what the name or the item object um yeah it would be just item object n and then well as Uh, 
uh, inside here as string and then um, name actually no it's at this point it's or else right is it okay or else okay or else yeah and then with the error what I want to do is um, have it go to um, I don't care do I can I just leave it empty and just say um, empty string does that work Oh my goodness, it works. Unwrap or and unwrap or else. No, but this worked, right? Oh, wait a it didn't quite work. It says it's a result string string. That's not what I want. I want it to actually be a slice. Like what as string returns. Oh, no, no, I need to um, say that is a uh, dot. Uh, what's the, what's, I need to, it's an option, right? Not a result here. This is a result. No, that's an option also. Am I confusing my things? Oh, no, option. Okay, and then works with options. Got it. I wanted to unwrap the, um, Okay, okay or else turns it into... I don't, don't want okay or else. That's not what I want. I want... Um, or, I guess. Or else. I want it to unwrap the option. Just give me the T. I don't want it to return a result. Returns the option if it's a value. Otherwise... Okay, that's what I want. I want or else, don't I? It's still giving me as an option. <laughs> Unwrap or default. Yeah, you're right. Okay. No, but I, I want unwrap or not the default. I want unwrap or, don't I? Yeah, that's what I want. Um, how come it's not, that's not working though? Take zero arguments. I just need to hit save. I just need to hit save. That's the, that's it. There we go. I got it. <laughs> you can still you can can you tell that I'm still kind of stumbling around with these um adapters, I would call them. And then turns an option into another option by um chaining, right? So if it's if you get something, then it passes it along. But if you don't, then um it just passes the uh, none to the next step and the unwrap will um, if it's none it gives it's going to give me an empty string otherwise it's going to return the contain sum monads yeah we're learning monads well clippy would tell you when to use what so i could let clippy teach me is that what we're saying okay so then um what we're going to do with that name is we're going to do a print ln space 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 the entity dash the name. Perfect. And then at the end we're doing self. So this has to actually mutate the self. Self dot stop is true. True. And it doesn't actually return anything. And we're done, right? Okay, I need to fix this one though. Otherwise it's gonna print every item in the game. So then that was, um, oh, where was it? Lost in this code. Find items. Which set this string, which is used here. Right, item has matching name. Here it is. So this is it. So that's the Python code. I, I think I'm getting faster at porting Python to Rust. I'm still a little, you know, wobbly, but it's not too bad, right? So, um, 
So this is it can, this can actually be just be just be done with a tail, right? So I can say um, components as how come it's telling me that? Don't uh, hold on. Oh, I need to dereference that. Um, actually, it will automatically do it. It's just not smart enough to tell me this, right? It should be as object, and then um, as object returns what? Unknown. Oh, because it's already a map. Okay, yeah, I don't need to do as object. It's just, just need to look it up then. Item. Right, and that could be null, so we're going to do, um... I guess I just want to, I want to do get instead, don't I? Yeah, get item. Because then I get an option back, and then I can say, um... If let, uh, okay, let me just do this a way that I, I know how to do right away, and you guys can train me to, to do this correctly. So I say let item equals that, um, if, well, match item, some, some I, I don't know what name to put there, but if that's there, then we're um, doing I as object. And, um, and then I O, because I don't can't come up with a great name. Um, I O dot get n or it's unwrap or I did this just now. What was it? It was unwrap or right. I know you guys are chatting and trying to help me on, but I'm, I I feel like I'm. Just can I can just get this myself. Where did I put this? I'm lost. I am lost. I am lost. It's up here. Unwrap or empty string. And the dot um Okay, let me rechat. <laughs> if you're not abusing iterators, you're not doing it right. Because those are all references to empty static arrays. Completely broken the plugin somehow, getting no IntelliSense. You might need to clear out the the um where you have the extension installed. I've had to do that before. Text is all basically rainbow. It'd be less painful if you worked on proper structs instead of random untyped JSON values. Yeah, but I if I work through the pain, then then I'll be more um. Capable with CERD, right? So the code looks like Rainbow stuff looks like you enable that syntax coloring option in the analyzer. Oh, okay. You're getting colored text. Wow. <laughs> I don't need to be showing that. Let me work through this. I as an object, and because that returns an option, and then we'll map. Okay, we might we might get a none. Okay, so really I should be doing um unwrap or down here. Yes, because the get also returns an option. And so does and then. That almost reads like like English, doesn't it? And then um none 
is going to be um, false. Oh, I need to do um, that equals um, self dot name item name false. There we go. Now, why didn't that work? Because I don't have a comma here. And unwrap or needs a default for T. Why didn't it like this? Oh, it needs a JSON value. Shoot. Oh, um, this should just be as string. If, right, so I need to do um, the as string out here. Right? Okay. Al almost, almost got it. <laughs> After this exercise, you'll just never reach for JSON value again and switch to using third without it. I don't know, maybe. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. We're using sir JSON. You mean JSON value? You mean like I'll never use? Uh, I, okay, I'm, I'm I'm not understanding. Learning how to annotate, derive, serialize, and struct. Oh, I see. So that basically um require the um JSON to conform to a shape first instead of doing all this ases and gets and stuff like that and and then. Yeah, I understand that. I'll I'll learn that next. I think it's valuable to learn. I'll learn that next. But I want to. I want at least be able to like get through this quicker, so that I, um, handling difficult things and then learn the other way too. I know you've been trying to make it, but I like to jump into the deep end, into the into the hottest part of the fire, because it's a challenge. I love challenges. What can I say? I I like a challenge. Okay. When I see as object, I should say that it's an optional map. So if it is a map, then I want to take that map and then look up the end, end field, which is going to return me an optional value. So then um, to get it into the same type, I should have an or. Hold on. The um okay, what does and then actually return? Yeah, I need to um we have like an or here. Or el or else. That returns an optional no, I don't need an or else. It's an unwrap or. Actually, isn't that what I want right there? Why isn't that not working? It wants me to put a JSON value there. I think I need an um, and then. N, N as string. I think that's what I want. Hey there, mud ribbit. <laughs> Don't you just need if let some and then if, yeah. I I haven't. I kind of skipped that part. I'm getting into this first, and then I'll fix that up. Um, how are you doing, mud ribbit? That'll work. Yeah. So I need to say this to myself, duck typing and all that, until I understand it. So we're saying the names are bad too. Um, what if I just take that and put it there, and then I can call this one item like it really should be? So some item, 
so if we get some item out of the components, then um, expect an object. If it is, take that object. So I should say like, instead of IO, I should say item object. With that item object, get the end component. And then with that, um, let's put, put it in here, the full thing, name. Um, reach in and, and get a, a string out of that. And then we want to unwrap that to um, that string. And if we don't get a string, then we get a, then we make a default. So we could have not gotten an object at all. And then we would have gotten a none, which is then passed all the way down to the unwrap or. So if it's, if item isn't an object, we get an empty string. If item was an object, but it didn't have a name, we get an empty string. If item was an object and it had in the name, but the name was not a string, we get an empty string. So that handles all of those, um, you know, get the default if you couldn't get it out. But once we're done, we, then we compare it to the name. All right, so then the last step here, I think, is... Really, I just want to say... Um, if... Uh, if some item is that, then that else false. That didn't quite work. <laughs> Rust makes you handle all the errors you've never seen and thought about. Finally. Yes, that's true. You change the outer match to and then unwrap or as well to only use methods. The, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, but I, can I do it with the, just an if else? No, it's if let. There we go. And then um, I guess what you're saying is the there's probably a more elegant way if the else is just a false. This I do have to do a bool I have to do a comparison to get the boolean right. Is there a more elegant way than that? Because that's pretty damn cool, isn't it? You can almost almost read it like English. If if let some item equal th th this is sort of clumsy. I guess that the r way to read this would be if you get the item and it is some item, then do that. Otherwise, false. And if you got an item, it had better be an object. If it is, get the name. And if that works, then then get it. Then then it better be a string. And if all of those stuff fails, then um, you get the default and then compare it to the name. Would and then work for option up here? Oh, I see what you're saying. So it can say um, that and then item this right that might make it a little bit easier to read um or did I just do or else or unwrap or false is that right no i didn't quite get it <laughs> Already see, you're already using three object methods. It would be fun and exercise to write the whole function only using them. Yeah. I didn't get it quite because this is a problem, right? I think because this is supposed to return an option. So and then is not quite the right one. Map? Maps an option T to option U by applying a function to contain the value. Oh, I see. So we'll, we'll get back. Do I need the unwrap or then? Hold on. Is this doing what I think it's doing? Just move the end ends out so I can move it out of the closure then? Okay. I don't want to change it too much. If I started with this, 
and I just want to, um, basically I want to, um, change the if let else into, um, using, using an option here. So get returns an option value and then calls a function if it's sum, which is what I want. Otherwise it returns none. So why doesn't this work? Because item is not the type I expected it to be, right? No. Okay, what Silmuth just said is what I'm trying to get my brain to absorb. So I can't, like, I appreciate the when you say to just do something, but I need to understand why I'm doing it because it's not important just to get the, com it to get it to compile and work. I, I need to actually learn from it. So it's doing the same thing as the match did. So I guess I, I don't quite understand. I don't haven't quite yet internalized what and then actually does. So this is what I need to study. Returns none if the option is none. Otherwise, calls a function and returns the result. Oh, but the type stays the same, which is not what I want, right? Yeah, it's saying that the type isn't what I want, so I don't want an end then. So the map is letting me change the type of it by applying a function. Yeah, but what happens with none? Like item, I need to look it up. None always just gets mapped to none, so it'll it'll avoid calling my closure completely. That's what I want to make sure I understand. Uh, map. This would be option map. It doesn't explicitly say that, which bothers me. <laughs> Shouldn't it say that in here? If F is none, returns none. Because it kind of, this conveys the, the idea that it's going to call the closure even if it's none. But you're saying it doesn't, so... Okay, I guess I should, that should just, uh, it goes without saying, and I'm just not getting that part. I guess it's conveyed by the fact that there's a T there, right? So we can only take a, um, yeah, it can only take the sum. It can't take a none because it's basically unwrapped inside there. Okay, I get it. So it's going to return none of the other type, which is what I want. So that's basically it, right? Applying a function to a contained value. Yeah, so map does a little bit more than map. It also it also takes the two paths. If it's something, it calls the closure. Otherwise, it returns another kind of none. Right? It's going to return a, a none for um, option bool, right? And then the unwrap or works because we either get a none bool if map returned, if map was given a none JSON value, right? Or we get a none bool if, if it went all the way, uh, got all the way down to there. Okay, I'm satisfied. <laughs> so now it's completely functional. We've changed it to com pure functional programming. Get the item, then map it. Unwrap or false. Okay, and then the other way you guys were asking me to consider was what? It was, let me go back up and chat. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, to deserialize it? I'll do that. Some, but there was something else, right? There was something I could have done instead of all this stuff.
just return the option from as object and then yeah i think that's what i did right get item and oh okay no it's slightly separate you can flatten the calls not all oh, right right to get rid of the closure yeah okay so let's see if i can do that let's see if i know how to do this Get real fancy? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get all fancy. So, the idea... Oh, not do the others and then inside the closure, but outside? I see. So it wouldn't be map then, right? Or wait a minute. You're saying that I would still have a closure, but it would be outside of a map? Well, I guess I'm getting confused. <laughs> Anyone happen to know if Rust complains about null bytes in the string? It shouldn't. <sighs> I might need to let this sink in first before I can make it even more fancy, unless I cheat and look at a buff seagulls solution. I guess we're cheating, because I don't think I can absorb any more learning. We'll just cheat and look, what, look up what the solution is. Okay, comparing that to what I have. Is get item different from get? No, it's just, you meant get, right? So get name and then I could just have a chain of and thens. And then is object and then get n and then okay, and then you have map or. I see. That's the part that's different. That's the part that's really different, right? How which way would I prefer to, to have this? Let's see if I can understand what I wrote. Yeah, I don't like... I think I like yours better. Because it kind of flows better. Let's see if I can do it. So we get the item. And then... With the... Um, item. We do um, item as object. And then item object. We're doing um, item object uh, get the name and then yeah I think I, I think this makes more this makes this makes um it makes more sense with uh, well it's it's clearer with this chaining of function calls name as string right really this should be um, name value or something. But the convention I have is it's object or string. So it would be, um, and then name string, name string equals self item name. And then, um, and then it's going to be or, right? Unwrap or? False? How close did I get? Okay, this is different. Why? Expected an option. Oh, I can't do that. Okay, yeah. So I didn't get that quite right, did I? It needs to be a map. Why does it need to be a map? Buff Seagull didn't use a map. Well, he used a map or. Because of it being an option. But th at this point, it's a string, right? And then, oh, 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 oh. Um, can I just do um, sum? Unwrap or false. That'll work, right? I, d I guess I'm avoiding map because it looks weird to me. So, 
that's basically the same only um I had to introduce another option here and you didn't because map allows you to um instead of you doing the and then which takes out the string you're doing a map which gives you, okay maybe this is more elegant than the way I did it so you did it you did it in one line what I did in two lines I avoided the map but I had to make an op I had to actually put that into an option to get the type to match what Clippy says does this make sense I think it should make sense car whoops other terminal cargo Clippy Um, I guess I have to touch the file. Cargo Clippy. It's going to warn about it. Oh, no, it did warn. Using option and then, which is more succinctly expressed as map. Okay, <laughs> so you guys are right. <laughs> I just need to get, um, I just need to be, um, become comfortable with map. Yeah, so it, this is the Raimu pattern and it's an anti pattern. They want me to use map instead of option and then some. What it, it, what does it say to try? It says to use map in place of this last line. So basically they're trying to tell me to do what a buff seagull did. Yeah, it's just that I'm used to map meaning something different in JavaScript and also something completely different in C++. So it, the name just bugs me, but I just need to get over it. So this, it wants me to say, um, let me, I know a buff seagull did map or, what would it be with map? I guess it's going to be in the, it's in the, going to be map and then unwrap, right? Yeah, map um the function would be name string name string equals self item name unwrap or false, right? And then this is easy like, that's what this map or does, right? It it collapses those two together so let's see what um Cl if clippy tells me that uh clippy run again no so clippy was okay with this so i could stop here clippy is fine but then map or is the collapse version of that i'm okay with that i'm okay learning map or i just want to look up the manual page for it to get a little bit more comfortable with it map or applies the function to contain value if any returns the provided or provides the provided default. So you put the default first. Okay, I'm 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 fine with that. So it's just or. Oh, I'm getting a sub Twitch Prime Lunar Artifice. Thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate that. So I just need to remember that map or is the same as map unwrap or afterwards. Only we've taken that out of the equation. Now I have exactly the same as a buff seagull had, which makes me feel good. Because it is a f uh, probably more r idiomatic. The only thing I did differently is I didn't want to use the, se the word name again here. Because I wanted to reinforce to myself that that is a string and this might not be a string. Map is transforming a value inside a container into another value in maps. Yeah, but above Siegel, you know how map is different in JavaScript and C++, right? So I was just avoiding it. <laughs> All right. That is totally the best way to do it, I think, because it's step by step. And this is implying that we're going to short circuit out if we get a none. And then the map or kind of catches those and puts it into false. Yeah, bat map is basically doing something on the um the object that it's applied to. It's it's mapping one thing to one option to another kind of option, right? And and un unwrapping it. That's what the or does. It's additionally unwrapping. 
Just gotta think more generically, not just arrays, but any container. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need the Python anymore. And then, um, yeah, I don't need this Python anymore. This should just work, right? It should find me that rusty iron key at this point. Been looking for that key all day. Let's just run cargo clippy. Okay, uh, touch the file just to make sure. It did complain about something that. What I'm doing wrong here on line 252. I should just look at that while I have a chance. Well, what's it telling me? What's wrong with that? It matches all errors. Match each other separately or use the error output. Um, okay, what if I just... What if I just said, well, I don't really care. The way to tell Rust we don't really care is to do that, right? Basically, Rust, I don't care about anything else. Now it's okay with it. Yeah, all right. That's the proper way to do it, I guess. They use map everywhere? Yeah. All right. Time to find the rusty iron key. Called unwrap on a none value on 126. 126. Did I misspell something here? Oh, yeah, that's not an object. Um, that is an array. Oh, is it? Hold on. What was the original? Oh, there's the original Python. I think it's an object. But I could be wrong. I guess we can debug it. So uh, debug, well, it's just, you just put debug around this thing, right? Uh, like that, right? And we can see what it looks like. Does that not work? Temporary value dropped while borrowed. Oh, I need to assign it out somewhere. So like let, um, come, I don't know. Components um, value equal that just a temporary thing, and then that we're all borrowing. I guess I could have just borrowed it in place, right? Yeah. What am I doing? What am I doing? Just borrow it. Just borrow it, and I get the thing back out. All right. Yeah. I think you can debug an object. You just have to borrow it, right? I need to build. And then I can run. See what it looks like. Okay, there it is. It is an array. Okay. So it's an array of objects, each having a type and a component. Okay. Got it. So I don't need to debug that anymore. I can just do this and it has to be an array. And then item has matching name has to take the, okay, this is not quite right, is it? The method after the debug wanted a reference, right, exactly. You've been setting up your workspace on the Chromebook. Remember the nicest thing you've done on your editor, which is just use the haste command, which uploads the buffer to haste bin. Oh, that's cool. I've been using gists, but um, that, this might actually be more efficient. Keep hydrated. Thank you very much. How are you doing, null pointer reference? And I just spilled water on my keyboard a little bit. Uh, I need to go get a little paper towel to um, siphon that out. Hold on. Let me um, just turn my camera off for a moment. I'm going to go get a little piece of paper towel.
I was just a slob and got a, a few drops in there. So I'm just going to, um, I don't know, what's, what's the verb where you like, um, it soaks it up? It's not siphon, it's another, there's another word for it. Yeah, keyboard has been hydrated, yeah. yeah. A little bit of water never hurt a keyboard. Wick, is that the word? It's like a candle wick? Where it, like the moisture just gets absorbed to the dry paper towel, so you just need to touch the droplet and it just sucks it right out. Like it really just was a few drops and they just kind of get wedged between the keys. Hooray for water tension, by the way. Yeah, got it. Mischief managed. Your keyboard also needs to hydrate. I'll 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 take one for the keyboard. The mouse and microphone likewise. <laughs> Just know that hay spin is not permanent storage. You can't configure. Uh, I see. So it's sort of short term capillary effect. That's what it is. Capillary action. Yes. So cheesy. And Kamundi. Oh, you're asking what capillary effect is? Yeah. Where are you um. You have a wet surface and you just all you you don't even have to really touch the the water at all. You just lightly put a something dry like a paper towel on it and it just sucks the water right out. Capillary effect. So yeah, I'm going to take your note, Buff Seagull, to remind myself that I I I probably end up just using a gist if it wanted to be permanent, but that sounds like a really cool command if you just want something temporary to share. When will I show the keyboard um when I get the evaluation done osmosis is the process yeah i think you're right too let's give a square a point i think these words all describe the same thing anyway um how did this work if that is an array how did this work i need to go back to the um this script and look for this function to see what it did Oh, it goes to another helper. Okay, I missed that part. Okay, I missed that when I was looking at this originally. This doesn't index components by item. It actually calls another function to f extract the item out. So I missed that part. Okay, so then... Um, Item has matching name also uses that, so this needs to be changed. This is not a map now. This is an array of values, I think. Is it not array? Okay, I need to look and see what it is. It's um this type. Vec. Vec, vec, vec. It's just vec. All right, and this is wrong now. I need to change that. Okay, but if it does match, what am I doing? Right, I'm calling it again. So I might as well just call it here. Um, self dot uh, get component components item to owned. So we need to make a git component because that's what this needs to call up here as well. Um, we need to say uh, self dot. Let's just say that again. Uh, self dot git component components item. Then that. So I still need this one. Function git component self. Uh, the components is. Um, Yes, a vector of values. And then the um the type is a slice. Hey spin paste will stay for thirty days. Yeah, that's long enough usually, right? A technically infinite time. <laughs> oh, you only have to view it and then it resets the timer? Wow. Okay, what did I get wrong here? Uh, 
Um, don't know. Is it here that I messed up, or is it just that this has to return? Um, this should be returning um an option, right? What did the Python do? Yeah, it's got to return an option of um an optional reference to a sir json value. I, don't, I had to train myself not to use the return keyword. What's wrong with this syntax? I missed something. Oh, that's a keyword? I'd rather just use a different word. How about a component type? All right. Thank you, Kamundi. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather use a longer name than a shorter name. But you're right, I could use just TYP. It was a joke to use that? Yeah, well, actually, I could have done that, right? Because we learned that earlier. That's how you say, hey, I really want to, I really like that word type and I want to use it. Okay. Anyway, um, this has some Python we need to port. So there's the Python. Let's port it. Next does what? What is this? How does this work? Oh, this is um comprehension here. Right, this is just unwrapping um basically a a list comprehension with one element in there. And um Okay, so the, yeah, this is going to look a lot cleaner in Python, right? It's basically going to, it's, it's supposed to extract the element which has a type of whatever the type is. So um, I think that's filter, right? Don't I want filter? It's going to be, um, so let component info equal um, components. Filter? Is it drain filter? I can't remember. <laughs> drain the filter. Find? Okay. Uh, find is not a method of a vector, though. So I guess we can't use find. Hey there, Mr. Balrog. How much does Santa pay to park his sleigh? Nothing. It's on the house. Okay. That qualifies as a good dad joke. How are you doing today? <laughs> I also never said hi to null pointer reference. Hi. Just remember, although there are no null pointer references allowed in Rust, it's still you're still very welcome in this stream. Also, hello to Viren6, who I also didn't say hi to. Back at 1222. I'm sorry, I missed your hi. It was kind of... Skipped my eyes. My vision didn't see it. There, there now I see it. Hi. <laughs> Been taming a wild horse today. Uh oh, what's the follow-up gonna be? Literally no joke? Mr. Balrog, I've never seen you not joke. Taming a wild horse for real, literally, sounds dangerous. You wouldn't want it to kick you in the behind, or anywhere for that matter. That's what they would try to do, right? Wild horse? Try to run away from you if they couldn't just kick you. Alright, um, What I want to learn about here is what are the options in uh, VEC, really? What are the methods we can do? Is there a find? Or is there a filter? You would think that there would be. Iter filter. Oh, right, right, right. We're going to want to iterate it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Thank you, man. Did someone else also say that? That I need to iterate and then filter? Yes. So, or find, right? Yeah, I think I want find because it's it's going to be in there once or not at all. So find will return me an optional item. Yeah, and so the predicate will be um, component. Component um, type well, component as object. Um, 
and then hold on those are all on iter yeah yeah abusing iterators yep we got to find in the iterator I'm trying to use these as much as I can and then F it's a component object component object type and then Mm, com can't use that name. I guess we'll say component object type. Component object type as string. Is it confused here? I really confused it, I think. <laughs> Let's see if you can make it fancy. I'm making it fancy. Look at this. Once you start doing it the functional way, that's not coming back. That's okay. I'm I'm okay with functional. Okay, I've confused it somehow. Okay, we're we're expecting an object, and then index type, which will be a value. Oh, that's that's the problem. Um, I have to do a get, don't I? Or do I? Hold on. I'm cheating. I'm looking at what I did before. <laughs> I did do a get before. So it's probably complaining about something later on. Yeah. Okay. Um. Because I haven't finished writing this yet. Okay, if once we get a string and uh, then string equal to component type. Um, these pop-up menus sometimes really bug me because I want to see the code that's underneath it. Uh, don't I want to do a map here? Map or false? There we go. Use unimplemented. <laughs> um, I need to close. Actually, it's just because this type is not right yet. That's an optional value. So... Actually, that is what we want to return. What's the problem here? Is that it's... Re what is the error? Found unit type. Oh, I just don't need to let. Oh, no, I need to do this last part here. It's find the component. And if you find it... Uh, map... Or, or actually, it's just map, right? Yes. No, 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 it's and then. Um, in this case, it's the, um, we're back to it being a component again. Component dot get component. There's something wrong with my names here. Oh, it's component info. Yes, so I should be using that name elsewhere. Um, as well. <sighs> map, right? Map a uh, component 
we'll just call that component. Actually, no, I don't need a map here. It's just that. I'm done. Aren't I? Because, okay, what's wrong here? The type is still wrong, I guess. Filter map, yeah, probably that's what I'm gonna want. Okay, I'm. There's just something wrong on this line, I think. Oh, is that the problem? That's just telling me that there's a lifetime mismatch here. Yeah. It's the wrong lifetime. The parameter or return type of declare, I need to use the lifetimes. There's another problem here, um, but that's further, further below. It derives lifetime from itself, yeah. So, um, it is, um, I need to derive it from the components. Yes, so I need to say like an A here, right? And then this would be um, down here, right? Like that? And that's not quite right. <laughs> what does that mean? Shadow is a lifetime name is already in scope. Lifetime A is already in scope. First declare it. Oh, there's another one up here. Yeah, I need a B then. And this isn't quite right syntax either, is it? It's B here. Yeah, I, I knew you guys were gonna tell me that. <laughs> but there's still there's still something wrong. Because the B needs to be in here, doesn't it? There we go. <laughs> Let's see how close um, I got to a buff seagulls. Not sure if it works. You see that people actually use names for a lot of times. Yeah, I need to do that too. Let's. Uh, what I've seen people do is um, actually name it after the argument. It's a lifetime of components. So this is basically saying it's returning a value that's the same lifetime as the components, which makes sense because that's where we're extracting it from. All right. Let's. Let me look at uh, what. Um, a buff seagull came up with and maybe I'll learn something because I did last time a buff seagull is my teacher today okay so comparing that to what I have right you using filter map which I don't know yet see this is the advantage the teacher has over the student the teacher can pull t tools out of their tool belt the student knows nothing about So if I read about filter map, I'll probably realize that it allows me to collapse this all down, which is what I want, right? So let me let me let me read about filter map and see if I can come up with the same thing. Filter map. I really like the glowy way that, that when it gets the focus. I really like that for some reason. Why is it in both standard and core? I don't know. Creates an iterator that both filters and maps. The closer must return an option T. T, T. I see B and F. What's a T? That's weird. They say B and F, but then they say T. Core is a subset of standard for embedded systems with no... Oh, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Because I have in the past worked on embedded software, so if I ever do again, then I'll know core is what I want to know about. Standard just re-exports stuff from core and alloc. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much. I think one of the coolest things about Rust is that iterators are lazy. You don't have to worry about performance all too much. Yeah. You can still use core and alloc when you can't use the full standard. Makes sense. 
Makes sense. Thank you, Silmeth. And Lunar Artifice. That's your first point. I'll give you a second one. And I probably should give Silmeth a second one as well from before. So then now you're at four. Okay. Builder creates an iterator which calls this closure on each element. If the closure returns some, then that element is returned. If the closure returns none, it will try again. Oh, okay. So it's it's picking the first one out, which is what find does, which is what I want, right? So that's what I want. Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to use it. So instead of iter, I would do filter map, right? Or do I need to do iter and then filter map? Yes. Okay. And then, um, what does it return? I don't quite understand it yet. <laughs> Closure, which takes an item or returns an option B. It's unwrapping for me, yes. So I don't need the map or false, basically, you're saying, right? I would just say end then. But I still need these inner closures, right? Um, I don't quite have it right, I don't think. Nope. <laughs> we'll look at man solution a little bit too. I need to um look back at what you did here. Oh, you're doing it a completely different way than I am doing it. You're You're having it look for the first thing that's an object, and then out of that, the first thing that has a type, and out of that, the first one where the type is a string. Oh... This is a whole different way of doing it. Yeah. But how did... The way I did it should have worked... Well, the way I did it, it didn't need filter map then, right? I just didn't understand filter map. I don't understand filter map. Let me read it again. <laughs> it's the mapping part I'm not getting, right? So the... It should replace that. I don't know if I want to use this style yet. Um, I guess it makes sense. Okay, so the if the if the concept is that we're chaining iterators, then yeah, we're gonna do a bunch of filter maps, right? So let's see if I can write it. Filter map. So the first turning one iterator to another is uh, we want it to be an, o an object, um, as object, right? It's going to return us the first one that is an object. And then filter map the first one that has a type. And then given that, we want the first type that's a string. And then given that, we want the first string that matches the component type. 
And then don't I need um, to turn the... The last one has to be special, right? Because I want it to return... Uh, is there a filter map? Yeah, what if it completely falls out? Oh, you have that's why you have a, the last one is not a filter map. <laughs> I'm like, can I use the filter map for the last one? This is returning what exactly? B is what? It's an option bool, isn't it? So, um, I can just do or no the equality offer doesn't return an option oh right it's on un it's unwrapping it for us so no okay the way this is chained though it works because each one's returning an iterator right Yeah, it creates an iterator. So at the end, we have to actually iterate them. That's why, we, that's why he did a find, right? Yeah. So we want to find where this is true. And do I want find map? No. I want find. Try find? Try find returns a result. So I still need to unwrap it, don't I? So this might as well be the find there. And then that's going to return a... Actually, that's all I need to do, right? Well, and then... Wait a minute. No, that returns an option, right? So then I would do an end then. Like that, right? Would that do it? Nope. Because I'm not understanding find again. The item here is... Um, ah, why am I not getting this? It's unknown. Why is it unknown? Because this, this is returning what? An iterator? <sighs> Turns an iterator into a string? Well, it's filter map, so it's going to return an iterator that gives you strings, right? And here we want to find where the string matches, so... I, I thought that this would work. Oh, wait a minute. It does work. I just need to give it a reference. I need to borrow it in a sense. And... Oh, wait. I can't use this because this is what... going to return me the string, and I, I've already... I've already um, I don't have access to the uh, component object anymore. Okay. This would work if I only needed to know if it was there or not, but if I needed to get the object out, um, this isn't quite, gonna, quite going to work, is it? What did you do here? Yeah, I don't think this is going to work, is it? Because the component info is lost. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. We we lose if we need to get to the um component, we've already lost it once this filter map will will strip it out, right? Or actually this one will. This will strip it and just re return us a type. You can make a tuple, that's true. So I could get both the tuple and the type along with it. Um so I could um say um a tuple here, right? component object 
comma the type. It get, then it gets a little bit more complicated, doesn't it? Wait a minute, unmatched types? What? Oh, uh, hold on. I have to do this differently, don't I? Because get returns an option. <sighs> yeah, I'm not adept enough to do that. <laughs> A closure that takes S and then wraps it with the object, I see. But um, the get is returning an option already. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit too deep. Yeah, I know, I know it would be simpler if I deserialized, but I, I, but this is a great exercise for knowing how to do filter map and find and all that stuff. Yeah, I wanted to see your solution. Also, I want to see man's solution too. Man solution came first. So let's look at that one first. This is man solution, so. Ooh. Oh, I see how this is working. Actually, would this still work? Because isn't this going to. Re isn't this going to, um, oh, I need to take a break. Let's, um, suspend that for a little. Wouldn't this return the type? How do we get the component info back? Oh, you have a new one. So, so we're going to abandon that one then. All right. Okay. Yeah. Same problem. New solution works. Okay. So it's similar to what I had. Let me go back to what I had. Because I had this, right? So you also have a find, but you made it a find map. You also have an and then. So your and then is the same as mine. So what you did here is, oh, you have... Um, Rather than make it functional, you have a little bit of conditional logic. Is this better? So this question mark dot, how does that work? This would be um, comp type. What's the type of that? I guess I can plug it in and see. Let's see what we get. What is I you meant to say that, I'm sure. And um oh it's an option it is an optional string. Yeah, so um this isn't gonna qu not gonna quite work, right? Wait a minute. Forget uh after a string? Hold on, what? Oh you forgot it after here. Yeah, but isn't that going to panic if it's not? How does that work? Oh, no, it early returns none. It early returns none. So if any of these get none, it early returns none right out of the find map. Oh, I like that. This can be folded even sh even smaller, though, right? Can't you just say, um, uh, maybe I, maybe you can't. There ought to be, like, I'm sure there must be something to, to shorten that even more. Okay, um, I'm curious if there's a way to condense this even more. Get filtered the option. Okay, let me, um, I, I owe, um, I owe it to Lunar Artifice to look at their solution. So we have like three different solutions, right? This really, it really helps. It might seem like an unnecessary diversion, but this is really helping me get like digest the different ways you can do things in Rust. So this is get an iterator, then filter map, 
based on the component, if it's, an, if it's a similar concept as this, right? So it's the end then. It's leveraging the fact that it can close on the um, component. I, I kind of like this. You have a new one? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sorry. I was scrolled up. Cargo init supports Fossil as a VCS. Fossil is... Um, that's a special version control used by SQLite, isn't it? That, like the creator of SQLite made for himself. This I kind of like because the closure captures the things that we need, the um, comp. Do we need the if else none though? Can you just do a question mark? So yeah, let me, let me, oh, and why do you have a next here? The next is kind of weird, isn't it? Don't we want to have uh, just um, a find or something? Instead of, I guess this is just an alternative way of doing the find, right? Next just gives you the first match. Yeah, but find is similar, right? It's just um, return you the first one. Yeah, okay. So what if I kind of did w this, so it would just be, since this is already, um, so that, um, to basically combining these two solutions, it'd be something like this. Um, I guess we would also do a question mark there and then hold on yes and no it would just be and then right mm, component type so then I don't need this. I'm just basically moving component type around. And then putting that here. Um. If it equals, right? Comp, else none. That would do it, right? Not quite. <laughs> Unnecessary parentheses, okay. And probably because we're, the type is mismatched, expected an E, no, oh, sum. Yeah. Something like that. But then that can be condensed too, right? Can I just say um, comp question mark? I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't there something else if you're just returning some or none? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I think you're right. It would just be filter, right? Like that. Except for the type of this is weird. Hold on. How did I get a double string like that? Does I really need to say that? Okay. 
Was there an as string? No, that's um, to interpret the type as a string. Yeah, or do that, right? It's weird that it's a reference to a reference. Oh, because this already is a reference. So then the other way of doing it would be just that. Although that looks weird. I kind of prefer to do that. That's the same thing, right? Yeah, it borrows it, yeah. That's, it's just really weird. <laughs> Compared to C++, C++ it's really weird. What am I getting wrong down here, all of a sudden? Oh, this is the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, we're still reducing the wrong thing. Yeah, so this won't work because I, I need it to be the sum component. Uh, what was it exactly? Filter. Yeah. I, have, I can't use filter because um, what I actually wanted to return is the actual component that we captured in this capture. We captured it from here. So um, I have to do it that way, actually. Rust is one of the langu most fun languages, according to Stack Overflow Survey. Why is that, do you think? Because of all the um, terse syntax, I guess? <laughs> now, do I like this version better than the other ones? Actually, let me go back. I kind of prefer, even though this, m this might be more clever, I kind of liked it this way better. I'm finding this one, for me, easier to read. It's 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 basically saying we're finding we're iterating and finding something and then when we find it we're doing that with it, and how we're finding it is we're um, taking the um, each one and and seeing is it an object if so does it have a type if so is that a type a string if so um, just make sure that that string is the expected string and the map or um, unwraps the or part unwraps and the map gets us from the um, the string to a boolean filter map component yeah that's it's typical for me to wrap my brain around that one that's that's I'm just if if you guys don't mind <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with this for now <laughs> Different versions are going to work for different people depending on what, what you've gotten accustomed to, I'm sure. This one is like more aligned with what I'm accustomed to seeing. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's probably just as efficient, right? It, there, it's also both um, lazy iterating, so. What does Cargo Clippy think? That's a good question. What does Cargo Clippy think of it? Let's touch the file and run Cargo Clippy. Um, I don't think it had a problem with there. I have a problem later in the file, though. Something I messed up down here. Yeah, down here. I messed something up down here. So Cargo Clippy was okay with that construction. Let me just fix this error. Now, what was wrong here? All right, I should just read it. Expected a value found an option. Uh, because we don't need to do to owned, right? This returns... Oh, no, returns an option. So it might not be there. I need to, like, unwrap it or something, don't I? Yeah, this should just be unwrapped. Because this will have get verified that it exists there. In fact, I could... Um... Actually, no, it doesn't. Hold on, what does the Python do if it doesn't actually have an item component? It returns none, right? So, I would just map it to none? No. I should just have this not return an option. It should just return a value. And then we just have it be null if it's not in there. I think that's what I want to do. 
um, to do a map here. Yeah. That's what the Python did. Actually, no, the Python did have a nun. Okay, so then what did the Python do when um, at the re at the output of that? Is it doing the equivalent? This one did a, a check, and so did that one, but I think the problem is when I called it down here, yeah, we didn't do it. Uh, we just stored it in there. Oh, actually, we st stored it in there, but how do we use it? That would be um, here, right? Yeah, it just calls git. So it would it would's the equivalent of doing an unwrap there. Okay, so then that's fine. Unwrap it better be a JSON value or else um, we're screwed and then oh, and then own it, own a, a clone it. All right. So then um then we're fine. Right? We we're, we're cool, Clippy. We cool, bro? No, we're not. Involves more and more reference and cannot be used within... Oh, it's basically telling me I should use a slice. I guess that's fine. Yeah, okay. So it wants me to use a sl to slice instead of a vec. We can do that. So that's just um, this, right? And then there was another place where I did it right here. It's just telling me I should use slices. Fine with me. Cool. We love Clippy. He tells us when we can use slices instead of vex. Cleanest you can get. Okay, one more looking at it. It's like a rust competition, isn't it? So we're replacing original with this. Oh, you put the... Um, the land that you put the um, closure out there so that you can use it in more than one place. Oh, you just cleaned it up. Find map. I don't know about find map. I actually kind of like this version. Just so that there wouldn't be nesting closures because you don't like that. You don't like nesting closures? Find map is find plus map. It makes sense. And what I am doing is what? I'm doing a find. Well, I'm not un I'm not unmapping it. Hold on, does this work? Isn't this going to have the same problem where it um, just maps it to a string again? Would this actually work? Yeah, I think, again, this is going to map... The, the find map is just going to map it to the type again. Actually, it's going to map it to a boolean. It's just going to do a map. It's going to be um, a boolean. I don't think that's... Sorry, above seagull. They could, could work with find instead of find map. Yeah, if we don't map it, if we just do a find... Yeah, maybe. I think we've beaten it to death, though. <laughs> I should just move on. Okay, that's the original Python. I should just make sure that this actually works. That's what I should do. We built it, right? No, I didn't build it yet. There we built it. Now I'm going to run it. I want to find my key. Hey, we found it. Actually, it runs a lot quicker than the Python did. Can I run time here? I don't have time. I don't want to change the time. There was a way to do it with PowerShell, but I don't remember how to do it. Uh, either that or i got to build it into the script. This is running a lot faster than the Python version did. That's for sure. You want to see the Python version? New shell, please. It will go to secrets. It's items, find, rusty, iron key. I think it, the rust was faster. 
But I really don't know unless, unless we time it. You want me to read the le messages by Lunar Artifice and Kamundi? Okay. How far back? You can set Rust Island to use Clippy for its error checking if you want. Okay. I didn't know that. Well, let me give you guys points. Let's do that. I think I want to see that. So, if they did it well, it would be in the... I need to take a break, too. Oh, I suspended that guy because I was in the middle of something. It would be in the um, settings of it, right? Settings. Hey there, Tua, bud. Benchmarking tool you use is Hyperfine? Okay. Is that a tool you install? Because I know you can do it with PowerShell. It's just complicated. I'd have to find it in my notebook. Extension settings. You would think it would be just easy to find here, wouldn't you? There should be something that says, use Clippy. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's uh, instead of check, it's Clippy. Oh, this? Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> both of you again. You guys are like competing for points, so I just have to give you both points. All right, so let me put it back to what it was where one of them was um, Vector. And it should... Um... There we go. Oh, no, that's an error. Okay. Um, I should just do undo until I see it. There we go. There we go. It worked. So we'll just keep that. So I get a nice little warning message if I um, run afoul of Clippy. One of these days I should just fix that thing. It's a C make problem with something. I need to take a break. It's already been four and a half hours. I think I'm almost done with this though, because it is finding my finding my item. So build one more time. I ought to just have it set up to build automatically. There someone already told me how to do that. I just haven't done it yet. Another pace bin. The at looks wrong to you? That's how you do a slice, though. That's just a reference to a slice. You can't, um... I guess you can move a slice in, but that's how we borrow a slice. Another... So, iterate the components, find map... I can almost read that. <laughs> Get the type, convert to a string, then filter. Wait a minute, that filter take, you can do a filter on an option? That works? Because as string returns you an option, option string, right? Would that work with filter? Huh. That I didn't know. So, are you saying, like, option has filter implemented? Oh, yeah, look at that. Neat. Cool. I like that. So, that's, again, more learning for me. Thank you, man. Filter, fine, and then get it. I actually kind of like that. This, um... Closure captured the component from the outer closure. It, it, above Seagull might not like this because it's, again, it's a closure instead of closure, but yeah, I can see how that... Do I like that better than the way I did it? Let's hide this. I said hide it. There we go. So I could have actually done that. Pretty it up a little bit. And then um, 
you just have a little syntax difference here. I just did that. Okay, so instead, so I, I did and thens, so you did the coalescing one. I actually like that, I think I like that a little bit better. Because and then forces me to have closures that I don't really need, right? Yeah, I could have done a coalesce here because find returning none would have gotten none all the way out, right? No, it would have just kept iterating. Yeah, so if I, to change mine a little bit, I would do that. And then I wouldn't need an and then because this unwraps it. So I would just do um, dot get type and then again unwrap it. to um, get the string. And I still need a map or, right? Oh, no, I've, I messed it up. <laughs> Find needs a Boolean, not an option. Hold on, what did I, how did I screw this one up? Let me, let me not do so many changes at once. Uh-oh. I was getting worried there that I lost my undo stack. So why can't I do this? Can only be used in the closure that returns result or option. I see. Because I, I basically it's telling me I haven't finished yet. I have to get all the way down to the bottom. Oh, right. I have to, it has to stay an option. So you're using find map because that un, unpacks it, unwraps it. So it allows you to do that. Oh, that's clever. Okay. I don't want to absorb too much. What I, you know what I'm going to do though? Um, I'm going to look at that later after I've had a, a rest break. So I'm going to say um, alternate implementation using find map. Uh, I actually want the actual raw code. As long as you're okay with me putting this in here, man. Actually, I don't need to do that. I'll just refer to it here because we know that it'll last 30 days. Yeah, I need to take a break anyway. <laughs> Please let me take a break. <laughs> Too many example. I'm, I'm, it's kind of cool that I got everybody thinking about how to do this the most idiomatic way or the most clever way or smart. I don't know what word to put in there. Filter map, find map, and there's another filter inside of there. Right, and then that works because this is an option, so it's either going to return it or none. Yeah, that works, doesn't it? Yeah, we're golfing. Is that what it's called? Golfing? Alternate implementation. And you were using filter map and find map. But essentially it's, yeah, using filter map is the key one, right? I guess filter map and find map. <laughs> there we go. Another one? I can't look at I can't look at paste bins all day. Ah, it, it didn't understand that syntax there. Probably let's I don't know why it didn't get that one right. 
You know, I don't mind just... Um, I'm not going to look at it too deeply. I'll say alternate. I want to look at these later after I've had a break. Um, probably after the stream. The difference in this one is... Is this essentially the same, only um, you instead of using a closure, you're using a function? Okay, let's just say alternate implementation uh, from uh, Vizara. All right, I'm going to take a break. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stream. I think maybe just wrap this thing up. Because I got to go eat lunch. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'm not going to end right now. I'm going to take a break and then do a little bit more and then call it. So I'll be back in a little bit. This time I'll remember to start the timer before I start the break. So I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back three seconds early to make it for being late last time. So while I was walking around the house, I uh, realized that there is one more thing that I kind of wanted to do, which is what you guys were asking me to do before, which is try to use um, the uh, deserializing to a structure to avoid having to do all of this stuff. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll have it as a another alternate implementation um, or maybe just make an alternate structure. Yeah, why not? So an alt, uh, not, not an alternate structure, an alternate function. So I actually don't need this anymore. Let me do it with proper deserialization. 
I was 35 seconds last time? Wow. I didn't know it was that late. I um, keep the break timer in sync as much as I can with the BRB counter, uh, but I give myself some slop. So as soon as the break timer was done and I could use move my mouse again, I, I switched the scene again. It's going to be a major refactoring, you think so? What if I just do it in a small piece here? What if we just say um, we're going to deserialize this value into a structure just to read out the... Um, Actually, I guess we don't want to do a get component. I want to do it somewhere else. What if we just do it with item has matching name? What we'll do is we'll deserialize this into a structure and just pick out the item name. I would just do that. I could have been using the structs the whole time, but I can't make the entire message fit a struct because we want to have have it support um like ignoring items that are um not matching the the pattern so like the container of this item i don't want to destructure this entire message or the components list but i can i can parse individual items individual entities no, I wasn't doing to mess with. I, I need to understand how to do it both ways. It, it, well, yeah, but what if, what if it um, violates the structure? I don't want it to like uh, panic or skip the entire list. So it's not that about unknown fields. Is if what if things just aren't the, don't match the um, syntax at all? So if this this is an array, but its elements might not conform to that shape, I don't want it to skip the entire array. Hey there, Microsoft Hooligan. And I also forgot to wave to Bazaar, who's been here forever. <laughs> N. Perry was here and I didn't even notice. Oh, yeah. Said hi to Tua, bud. Otherwise, it's been lurking in the background, in the shadows. N. Perry lurking in the shadows. I also forgot to say hi to two, but I think I was just in the middle of something when I was running into that stuff. Rust compiler is here too. Benchmark it. Yes. Actually, I kind of wanted to do that today too. Um, but I um I need to either run it in PowerShell or um or get a tool that will do it. I'm not on Linux, so I can't do time, which would be cool. Rust compiler can be handy, yeah. Rust compiler is in chat now, hopefully. You can ignore fields from that JSON objects too. If the, the structure is completely wrong, you get a panic. Yeah, I don't want to get a panic. What I want to do is like skip. Since this is a loop over the entities, I want to, if an entity is wrong, I want to just skip that entity, but then keep looking at the other entities. Hyperfine. Yeah, but can I run that with my Python? I need to like compare the Python with the Rust. So is Hyperfine something that could run a Python script? Or is it just Rust? You won't get a panic unless you unwrap the result. Okay. I am unwrapping at a few points, though. So I'm, I would get panics here, and even the way I'm doing it now, I guess. But yeah, the, the whole array has to parse correct. It has to be an array. And the entity has to be an integer. Okay. So only the shell runs anything? Okay. Why don't we do that first, then? So, build it. Make sure it can still build. Let me make sure it still works. Okay, and then you're saying I can just, from this shell, I guess, I can do cargo install hyperfine. Downloading one crate. Now, where does it actually put it when I run it inside my workspace? Does it put it in my workspace or does it make it global? building a lot of things. It puts it in my global? Okay. I can look there. And I'm fine with that. If it's a useful tool. If not, I guess I can uninstall it. I hope it's installing a bunch of stuff, so I hope uninstalling is just as easy. <laughs> or else I have a lot of things I gotta uninstall. See you, Nui. Thank you for being here. 
107 out of 108. I can't wait. It's got one more. One more to go. You can do it, Hyperfine. You know what's interesting is ever since I um, lost my connection to Twitch, I haven't dropped a single frame yet. So I wonder, I, I did switch uh, uplinks from Phoenix to LA. I wonder if it's a problem with the Phoenix data center. All right, so how do I run the thing? Oh, interesting. So I would just run the other command I did. Uh, in the other folder, the other terminal here and just put it in front. Okay, why did it tell me that it terminated with a non-zero exit code? The exit code shouldn't have been non-zero. I guess we want to do uh, dash i. That might be... Um... Is it running it multiple times? Hold on. How many times did it run my program? <laughs> Don't forget to build with release. Oh yeah, I need to get a fair comparison. Oh, it ran, it didn't, okay, I understood. I understand. I think it, it ran, took each argument as something to run. Okay, all right, all right. So I need to like, how do I make that one argument then, just like that? I don't think that's going to work. Or would I do a backslash for these? Or I could just run it with the, uh, actually that is a script. Will this work? Is it running it multiple times? It ran it 10 times? <laughs> I didn't know it would run it more than once. But that's actually kind of cool. So it gets an average out. Let me see if my server actually saw that. So... That actually would be kind of brutal on my server, wouldn't it? Let me run that again. Yep, I can see it connecting, downloading all items in the game and disconnecting <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We can hit, I can hit my own server, that's fine. Yeah, so I probably don't need that. It only was a problem before. Okay, before I do it again, let me um, make the release build. So, build release. And then I'm going to want to uh, change my script to run the release build, right? So... Do I have that script open? Items, Rust? I do. So this needs to be release. There we go. And that will be an apples to apples comparison. What's the command for Python? It's similar. It's similar to this uh, Rust command. It's gonna, instead of running the program directly, it runs Python and then passes it the name of the Python file, but then the rest of it's the same. So this ought to, uh, oh, I already, that should do nothing, right? Okay. So it's only a little bit faster. Look at that. And now we're going to run the same thing with Outrust. With the Python. Well, there you have it. Python is more than, takes more than twice the num amount of time. It's not terrible. I would, I was hoping for a double the speed or, you know, half, half the time. Was this the debug build and this was the um, release build? Am I looking at that right? Yeah, okay. Use both scripts in the same, oh, okay. So um, to do that right, I gotta do um, 
that and then another whoop I hit enter <laughs> I'll just let it run my server's like you really want to find that Ryan rusty that rusty iron key don't you items rust rusty iron key Now it's comparing the two. I think I, I kind of like this tool. It's definitely faster. 2.52 plus or minus 0 0.17 times faster to do it in Rust than Python. All right, cool. I'm glad that you told me about that tool. Above Seagull, I'll give you 10 points. I know. So I think I'm never going back to Python. <laughs> All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was try the uh, deserializing. So hold on. I guess I don't need to show that. Um, I want to do it on a smaller scale, though. So I wanted to just do it with... I think I just want to do it with the um, one of these. Yeah, just item match has matching name. Let's do it there. Does it keep the old stats? It would be cool if it did. It would have to save it to a file, wouldn't it? Maybe there's an option for that. Okay, so... I have to check this in, actually. I haven't checked this in in forever. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. So now we're actually holding on to the items that we match. And then printing out the ones which are fetched. Okay. They need to keep this around. I don't think I need that to keep that one around. So I need to go back to on entities. On entities, there we go. Um, don't need why did this return that? Why am I returning a result like that? Oh, because I do have some early returns, yes. Okay, so then, um, yeah, we just need to drop this. All right, and I don't need a, I don't need those extra extra line there. All right, so then it's just this. All right, so this is um, what do I want to say? Get um, Rust version of find items. Script functional. So, um, hold on to items uh, which match, which match uh, what? Which match, not predicate, which match um, something. I need a word. <laughs> you love Rust for a little bit? Yeah, I'm I'm loving Rust. It's difficult, but it's because I'm still learning it. Hold on to items which match criteria. That's the word I was thinking of. And then, um, right, so uh, display matching items. And then... Um, Find items which match by name. I think that's all I added, right? Also did some miscellaneous cleanup. So um, clean up a few places. Well, some minor refactoring. Some refactoring included. So we'll just, we'll just commit that and move on. Think it's bad for game dev? Have you heard of Are We Game Yet? Uh, 
Are we game yet? Have you heard of Are We Game Yet? That's what I would ask you. I haven't looked at Are We Game Yet, but I've I've heard that um, there's a lot of resources and discussion there about using Rust in games. No one has made a AAA game in Rust yet. It's only a matter of time. Zig syntax is poo, huh? I'm going to look at Zig soon. I actually looked at it a little bit this morning. It didn't look that bad, but I only glanced at it. Soon, trademark. Is Jai actually available? I thought uh, John is still working on it. And it's not public yet. Maybe it is, I don't know. Game dev is bad for game dev. <laughs> I don't know there's a Rust emote. Someone has a Rust emote. Nice. Jai isn't public. Yeah, that's the one thing that, like, I just kind of chuckle at when people say that Jai is going to save game dev. I'm like, well, if it ever gets released... I think Rust is just too complex. Game dev isn't about safety. Um, I, I guess if you don't care if your game crashes. But, you know, for me, I, I like the idea of um, encoding into the language what I already try to do in my own code. So, is this Rust? This is Rust. It's not idiomatic Rust, though, so I'm still learning. Something more idiomatic would be kind of like this where we're using um, chains of function calls to um, to inspect and unwrap options. And then this one where we're, um, we're doing, we're iterating a list of components and finding something that matches these this criteria and then extracting out a piece of it. Uh, it's more functional Rust. Uh, here's where we're iterating some items and um, pulling out the name from it and printing it. So. You wrote a thread pool in Rust. Yeah, there was a thread pool in the Rust book, too. The Rust book actually have has you make a thread pool in the last chapter. Right here. They have you implement a thread pool. So, yeah. It was very simple. It was, uh, I think the thread pool just, they have code down here to do it. Where is it? Did I skip it? I think I might have skipped it. Oh no, here it is. Very simple, right? It just um, starts up a bunch of threads. So a bunch of join handles. So they do, at some point they do a clone. No, a spawn. Yeah. Starts to break down when doing extremely involved systems. You wrote an ECS in Rust. That from the outside is awesome, but internally was a nightmare. Reminds you of JavaScript? Yeah, the, um, there's a lot of things in here that are very similar to JavaScript. Also things that are similar to C++ too. Yeah. <laughs> right with 3.8.5.4 partner. <laughs> Um, what I had got a kick out of today was learning about the cow. Did you know you can turn things into cows with into? It's true if the thing that you're putting it into is a cow, which is clone on write, which is a way to make a clone of something if it needs to have a larger lifetime than you um, than your what you're passing in. Yep. I don't know. I kind of like it. It formalizes a process I already use in C++, which is what I like about it. So the fact that we um, have to be very conscious about the lifetimes of objects. I actually never gave this a nice name. I should just probably call this context, shouldn't I? The lifetime of the context is the same as the lifetime of the item name slice and also the, um, the keys to our handlers map and our handlers themselves. Should I just fix that now? All of these A's should be context I don't think I use a for anything else and that should still build right build please no problemo okay so I wanted to do one, one last thing today which is I'm going to um, redesign re-implement this instead of using um, these uh, as 
and then um you know mapping them we're going to use um deserialization of the json so i just need to learn how to do that i bet it's talked about way back here right if i could go back in my history to where we're in um tungstenite yes go to the documentation for tungstenite please so there should be something in here for um deserializing right oh no it wasn't tungstenite it was um shoot it is uh not tungstenite wrong thing i need to go to surd surd rust Yep, it is surd. Doc surd. There we go. All right, let's learn how to do deserialization of JSON. Maybe they talk about it in their documentation here. I don't know. Okay, that's the wrong place. Deserialize. Deserializer. You want surd JSON? Probably. You're probably right. Yep. Thank you. This is on untyped, and they'll have a example of typed. Here we go. Okay, so we need to des derive serialize, deserialize, and then we just do. Ah, I see how that works. Cool. Let's just do it. And they up using a port of STB image. Once had a ping loader cargo with Rust that had 72 dependencies. Took three seconds to load a ping. Three seconds to load it after you built it? That doesn't sound right. I don't know if you could say Rust solves issues with with RAI. I I guess you would. I would say that Rust makes the structures. That you will the makes the um makes it a rigorous makes adds rigor to R A I I and makes you do it properly. Well, does it, I guess that's the wrong that's the wrong thing to say. Idiomatic Rust allows you to um, employ R A I I with rigor and enforces best practices. Yeah, there we go. What's the longest you ever stream for? I think I've gone almost eight hours, but I try not to go more than like five these days, which means I'm gonna have to end soon. But I wanted to get this last thing in here. So if I define a structure, I can't do it inside of an implementation. I need to do it outside, right? So what if I put it up here? Struct, I don't know, item. And then I'll have, I have to do what they are doing, which is derive. And where are those used from? Surd. Derive surd. Serialize. I'm concerned that I'm not getting auto completion here. Yeah, that's not going to work because of why. Yeah, so you're saying I don't need serialize. You're probably right. You probably just need deserialize. Yeah. But it didn't understand CERD, which is weird. Is it, it might be because there's nothing in here. Yeah, that might be why. I'm not actually using it as a dependency. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so what version do I want? Let's go to cargo.io, crates.io. What's CERT up to these days? It's up to 1.0. Cool. 1.0. And then I got to do a cargo build, and then I need to reset the language server, right? Because we pulled in uh, another dependency. Not sure if it's like Zig where it can beat C. We'll find out. Okay, so, um, whoops. Lost my window somehow. Let's uh, restart the Rust Analyzer. Yeah, add a feature to derive macros in the depth for CERD. What? Really? Did they explain that here? I had no idea you had to do that. How do you do that? Features equal derive? 
Is that something that I learned in the book and forgot? Where is the book? Do they talk about this? Features? Derive? I just forgot about it. The book never talks about it? Uh-oh. So what would cover this then? Do I just need to do a broad search with Bing? Bing, please. Rust. Features. Derive. Or is it part of uh, Crate? Rust Crate? Huh. Okay, they just say to do it, but they don't explain why. <laughs> oh, it's just a feature that they define. Oh, so it's like an option. All right. I can accept that for now. They're basically saying we're not going to give it to you unless you ask for it. So we'll ask for it. So it's an alternate syntax here, right? I have to say um, version equals... And then I have to say uh, features equals derive. All right. So then build it. Yeah, it's making making it uh, unlocking different parts of it. Optional compilation. Interesting. Okay, it's in weird that the book never talked about that. You can do derive serialize or deserialize on your structs. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right here. So after it builds it, and then I restart the language server, now it's okay with that, and I just need to add fields that map what I'm going to be de deserializing out of here. So it is going to... Um, how do I say this? I'm going to leave this line as is. But it's this one I care about. So it's going to be an object with a name inside. So it's really just it's really just name. Um, name is a. Uh, do I have to say string or can I say slice? String. I have to say string. Yeah, I think it's 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 leading me to do string. <laughs> They probably say that in the documentation too, and I just missed it, right? Because I'm not reading it closely enough. Yeah, they say string. Probably because it's it needs to own it. Alright, so let's try to use it. So then it um I still need to do this first part, right? So it's possible that that doesn't even work. So I have to do um a map or false, comma. Um, component, right? And then, um, how do they use this? Third from string. Okay. From, am I typing it wrong? No, it's third JSON from string. From string, um, it's not going to be from string, though, is it? Hold on. Am I already? Is that already too late if it's a value? <laughs> okay, there's a from value. Good. I see that now. So there's components. Um, actually, it's component. And then that we want to. Um, Actually, I don't want to map at that point. I still want to do an and then, right? Because that can that returns an option. Then I want to do um a map or false. And then um Am I doing this right? Component dot name. 
is a self item name. Something tells me I'm getting this totally wrong. It probably needs to borrow that component, doesn't it? Uh, expected option found res oh, that returns a result. Hold on. I should just look it up from value. It does return a result. Okay, so I can't do, um, it's not map or is it? It's, um, I can, either backcraft, I'm, I'm trying to remember my, my rust. Is it okay or? Yeah. How are you doing backcraft? Okay, or. It's not okay, or. What does okay actually do? Returns the option if it contains a value, otherwise returns opt B. Um, I don't know if that's what I want. Just okay. I don't want to be guessing things. I want to, I want to know what I'm doing. So what am I doing? My work rave is getting in my way. Actually, if I close that, I'll have more space. So what does okay actually do? Discarding the error, if any. Is that what I want? Um, yeah, go up here. What is OK? Tell me what OK is. Result? I always forget. So what if it is an error? Oh, it just becomes none. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I want. Jacobus, you've resubscribed for four months in a row. Four is such a great number. Thank you for the resub. Yeah, it wants... I always forget this, that it wants me to let it borrow it. Uh, this is not right. Oh, it wants me to actually dereference it? We're going to consume it? Okay. Then what's this problem? All right, because this is giving us what? Wait a minute. It's actually giving us a new one, right? Oh, that's right. They did that in the example code. I need to actually tell it what type it is. So then, um, hmm. How do I annotate it? Do I do it like, do I need to actually assign it to something? Or use a turbo fish. I think I like turbo. I'm going to use a turbo fish. It's from value um, item, right? And then... It really wants me to dereference it. But now it's. It can't move it because it. Doesn't own it. Okay, is there something with from value? From value consumes what it's given? Looks like it does. It's consuming it, right? Yeah, so don't I have to do a component dot to owned or something? There we go. Or clone. Yeah. Clone a bit be more obvious what we're doing, right? Yeah, because we we can't steal it from there. 
Right, I think I got it. Now, did I need this at all, or... I do because... Okay, I do it for this reason. So that this works. So that this type is an item. Right, item name. Okay. So let's see if that works. That's the alternate implementation. I'm just going to run it without hyperfine. I don't need to run for hyperfine. Yeah, it works. So there you go. So let's see if I understand what I did there. In three lines, we did what it took us four lines to do previously. And what the parsing did for me was that it, um, it took care of interpreting it as an object, and then it, it did the get for me and made sure it was a string all in one line, right? Essentially. Yeah, and I also got the whole component out, not just the name, which is kind of handy. Could also annotate the component item. Oh, I could do that too. I like the turbo fish though. But yeah, either way, right? Uh, no. The other way, right? Uh, down here. And then I don't need the turbo fish, right? Yeah, you're right. Yep, yep, yep. Is this database stuff for using Rust for? Nope. The database stuff is um, another project in parallel with this. And, uh, and now do from string at the top and statically type all the objects so it doesn't need to deserialize it twice. Yeah, but then that there, we end up refactoring the entire thing to use um, the deserialize. I guess I'm okay with it at this level. It's just that what if um, one of the entities doesn't parse correctly? Can I get the array with some of its elements not parsing correctly? Yeah, if I want the tool to be flexible enough to ignore items that don't parse correctly, I think I don't want to parse the entire entity's array into a structure. I want to um, just parse, parse these individual entity info. So I guess I could do it at the entity info level here. Yeah, so we can do that. Um, how would I do that exactly? Because um, there's an embedded type information in there, I don't know how to, how to don't know how to reflect that. Uh, reflected by this, right? It actually has to have a type, and the type has to be equal to item, or to to be parsed as an item. Yeah, I don't think I want to go that far. I think I want to just stop here. As um, this is enough for me to chew on for now. So it's going to consume... It's interesting that it consumes it. It doesn't just borrow it. Why would it need to consume... Why would for, from value need to consume a value? Isn't that weird? You can make an enum for different types, yeah. But I don't know how to do an enum with deserialize. Think it should work? Yeah. I think you pro It sounds right to me, but I don't think I want to go to that depth. I think I'd much rather eat lunch if that's <laughs> call it a day and maybe look into that later. How would you get it, get the string then implicit clone? Um, good point. Well, from value is making a new owned object, right? So it owns strings. So wouldn't they just be constructed as needed from you know, by cloning the parts of the component that's borrowed. Not allowed to eat lunch. <laughs> Familiarize with attributes. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to take that and put it in my notes since I got to wrap up today. Uh, I didn't, I want to get the whole message. There we go. Thank you, Silmeth. What do sea monsters eat for lunch? Potato ships. <laughs> nice ownership it could just move from without clone i see what you're saying so it's a trade-off right if it consumes the string it can reuse its bits for other things that makes sense 
We can't ban Mr. Balrog because Mr. Balrog has a license in here to tell bad dad jokes because I'm a dad and I appreciate dad jokes. <laughs> That's why from value takes ownership. I guess it's implied by the the word from. From implies consumption, right? Or does it? I thought it was into that. Isn't it into that implies consumption? So this is sort of weird to me. Unless I'm misunderstanding it. It implies both. So from is both consuming its input and constructing something else. Okay, then I got it. Then, yeah. In the staff room. Okay, Mr. Balrog, you're kind of pushing it there. <laughs> Sir, it ignores unknown fields per default. So you can write a struct that only contains the fields you can. Yeah, I'm okay with it ignoring unknown, f unknown fields. What I'm concerned about is, let's say there's an item whose name is not a string, but an array for some weird reason, right? Then it would... Um, Give, give me a parsing error and I'm okay if the parsing error at the level of looking at one item it would just you know discard just skip that item but if it's at the level of looping all the entities if like we parse the entities into uh, deserialize the entities then any one broken entity would cause the tool to break yeah I have poly yeah the L these entities might not be items they might be um, monsters so Although that's not quite what you get when we do the query. I think it actually... Actually, now that, I'm, now that I think about it, does it return just items? I can't remember now. What message does it send? Oh, yeah. It does, it does filter by just the items. So conceivably, if all the items in my game follow a certain shape, then I could parse the entire entities list and it'd be fine. But if I, like, asked for all entities in the game, not just items, then... Since it's a polymorphic JSON, it wouldn't quite match any um, deserialized for the entire entities. But I could, I could, I could, I could go with deserializing entity info, and then I wouldn't need to do the as u64 as array and all that junk. Do I want to do that, or do I want to eat lunch? I could do this. I, yeah, I could do that. We'll do we'll 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 make it one step further. So instead of item, it's um item entity. And item entity will have um a um entity which is an U sixty four and it has a item which is um do I have to if I can't nest them in definition, right? I have to actually make two structures. Um you gave me a link that I should just look at. This one. Okay, so I'm um, putting that up here. Okay, so I have to have two structures. Polymorphic JSON is it's an extremely useful thing. You want to see what I've done with it? I've done some crazy stuff. Game dot uh, snapshot. Uh, collapse everything. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, collapse everything. So because my JSON is polymorphic, my entire entity component system fits within a huge JSON object right now. Um, I am moving this to a database, so I'm kind of not going to need polymorphic JSON much longer. But yeah, for example, a character has uh, one shape, but then an item has a totally different shape. Right? And different different fields entirely, and then um, some things get really wacky. Like, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, collapse it us all again. Components, components, dialog, um, where it's nested, nesting within nesting within nesting. I mean, it just gets crazy. Look at that. So um, this allows me to have. In the entity component system, dialogue entities and character entities and items all existing as just JSON objects. Well, we're adding some structure in the form of a database, 715209. So like I was saying, like this all is like how we used to do it. So you can argue that I don't really need this much longer. Uh, why does it keep insisting on... Exp oh, because the game is running. <laughs> it keeps re resetting the snapshot every 30 seconds. Yeah, so... Um, this actually will probably go away and won't be JSON much longer. Now that I think about it, it'll be more binary. 
Um, but for now, this would have to be another structure, right? How do we do that? Can, do I just have another structure? Derive, surd, deserialize, struct item, and then have item be item, and the name is in the item, and then this has to be um, deserialized as n for this to work. Actually, I'm wondering how it worked at all before. I didn't have to... Oh, wait, wait. Because I didn't look at it before, right? Um, how did it work, actually? From value. Actually, how did that work? That shouldn't have worked. Did I not build it? I think I didn't build it. <laughs> this wouldn't have worked because that needs to be n, not name. Okay. Uh, I need to go back to what it was for a second. I don't want to lose this though, so let's just keep that around, comment it out, and move back to this being just that, right? I think I just forgot to build the damn thing. This is probably not going to work. Why does it work? It's n, not name. Um, from value. How did this ever work? Oh, you're right. That's why. Yeah, thank you, Silmeth. <laughs> I shot myself in the foot by having the, um, by not, by not running the thing I'm building. This needs to go back to debug. Yes, that's the reason we've been making the debug build and not running the debug build. Yeah, so it can't find it, and the reason is that it's n, not name. Um, but then I need I can annotate that, right? I can... Um, that's what I was just reading about. Surd rename, right? Now, which way does it go? Do I have to do surd... Rename equals n here. Is that what I would do? Yep, that's what it is. All right. <laughs> now we actually tested it with deserialize. Now I can uncomment this and I need to move this one up here. All right. And then this needs, that shape has to actually um, match exactly what I had in the, um, here. Okay, and I don't. It's components, which is an array. Okay, how do I represent that? Components? Array of item, I guess? No, it's, um, there's another level, right? Uh, that would be um, an enum component. Component. Vec. I can't use a slice? I want to use a slice, though. I'm so used to using a slice. You guys are right, though. Um, Vec, and then this says uh, item in it. Can I do that? And what's wrong with this? The trait is not satisfied. Oh, because I need to deserialize a component. Fair, fair enough. Cool. But how does it know it's an item? Good question. I have no idea how to do that. This is a variant attribute. Variant attributes. Yeah, how does it um, pick item as opposed to something else based off of the type? That's what I'm not getting how I would do.
I think this is too complicated for me to do on an empty stomach. <laughs> because a component is going to have a, um, the way it works is, um, like this, right? It has a type and a component. So a component would have, um, actually it's not an enum, that's a struct. Well, okay, there is a, there is a enum, but there's also a struct, which has the, uh, component holder. And there's a component, component, but there's also a type, which is a string. And that has to be, um, renamed. because it actually is the string type. There we go. You can even insert sort to deserialize the variant. Yeah, that's what I, but I don't think I can figure that out, that out right now on an empty stomach, but that's essentially what I want, right? This is, this is how it's actually structured, that an entity, it's actually not even just item entity, it's a um, entity info. An entity info has the entity number, and then it has a list of component holders, and each one has a um, type and a um, component. And the component is the is an enum because it 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 varies on uh, what the string is. We pick which one. Look at tagged and untagged. Yeah, but I want to eat lunch. <laughs> enum representations. Consider that, yes. It would look that. Okay. Type. Ty I don't know what they mean by type there. Oh, if you have type there. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was looking at their JSON up here that didn't have a type. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, there it is. I think we're using adjacently tagged, aren't we? That's what I've been doing. Okay, so I get it. So that I would not need a component holder. I would have component. And it has to have um, a third tag equals type content equals component and then we have I have to annotate this don't I I have to um, rename from item I'm guessing I don't know If the rename applies to the tag, otherwise I'm kind of screwed, aren't I? Like, how do I it, how do I rename the tag? Oh, wait a minute. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, like, if it has to be item, does that work? I guess I can try it. I'm just guessing that this allows me to rename. This is, um, yeah. Just sort of rename the enum variant. That's what I'm doing, right? That's what I'm doing right there. All right, we'll try it out. So we'll to try this out down here. I would do it at this point. I would say, um, Well, at this point, it should match an item, right? So I, sh I, I can just do an unwrap on it. So let, um, well, entity. Can I just say raw here? Well, value. And then um, 
let entity info equal um, sir json from value entity info value dot clone dot unwrap and then I get a uh, oh I got an unknown oh it should be clone not close and then I should get back out it still doesn't know the type oh, because I need to tell it what type I want I want a component component and then um, Entity is entity info dot. Um, okay, why did it, it still doesn't know the type? Why not? Oh, I know. I want entity info. Duh. Then it's a dot. Uh, it really doesn't. It really doesn't like me, does it? <laughs> it should just be entity. Yeah, okay. Autocomplete is just having a fit. You don't have to do it in the for loop. I can't deserialize all entities because... Um... Oh, okay, I can if they're all items, yes. But then I would have to have another declaration for the vector, right? Can I do it from a vector? Or from an array? Let's just do it at this level. <laughs> um, so components is um, entity info dot components. So now we've extracted out the entity and its components. And then, um, right, so I just need to item has matching name needs to be given the component now. Uh, why did I have that in my clipboard? I don't know. This should just be component. Actually, don't I want item? No, it's components. What am I doing? It's still a... Uh, yeah, it's still a slice. Hockamit can't find that. Oh, because it's component. There we go. No, I extracted it, the component out. So um, it's a component, not an entity info. It's a vector of components. Yeah. So then um, a bit back up here. Then I don't need to get item. Um, I just see if it is an item. So... Um, I would just say uh, let item equals, uh, well, if, is it if let? I forget the syntax. It's even the simplest stuff, and I can't remember it, probably because I'm tired. Um, oh, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I don't need to do that, do I? Wait, this, I, I have this wrong. I'm, there's something wrong here. Oh, that's right. We still need to loop through it. So I still need to call get components. Yeah. So I need to update get component then. Yeah, that is that. And... Yep, it's just returning a component of that type. Okay, but it's not by string anymore, so it's got to... Um, Don't I just use a match then? I don't need to do any of this stuff anymore. Yeah, I don't need I don't need this. Just leave it alone. Instead of doing get component, I do um if let 
item equal or if let um item item equal um component and i forget how this works it's just a uh, component right oh i need to i need to loop through them shoot so i need to find self dot um, find map find <sighs> not self components iter find component where um I'm <sighs> just so slow today. Right now, I'm running out of energy. It would be like if... If let item item equal component, right? Is that even valid syntax? <laughs> I don't think it is. Do you have to say true, else false? No, but I, um, yeah, I guess so. It would be cool if that just worked as a Boolean expression. Yeah. It still doesn't like that, though. Semicolon. Oh, right. Well, after we uh, find it, then we got to um, do the end then. And at this point, it's... Um, isn't it just map? item name now why didn't that work found struct item do I have a struct name item I do okay I needed to do component item Okay, what's wrong here? What's wrong on line 104? Expect a signature of a function that takes a component, not an item. Oh, yeah, I need to do, um, like, map find or something, right? Yeah, I don't want find. It's like, it's one of these functions I'm not good at yet. Um, is it find map or map find? Map find. Is that what I want? Is that what I want? Find map? Find map? I think that's what I want, right? Find map? And then do... Th um, actually, I have no idea what I'm doing. Actually, do, don't I just do find map component? I mean, I guess I could do that. Some item, otherwise none. Yeah. It still didn't doesn't still doesn't like my map for though. Is 
Oh, it's close though. It just needs a reference. And I probably don't need to say that anymore, right? So just need to borrow. There we go. <laughs> but this is ugly. There's, there must be a better way to do that then, though. Must be an, a cleaner way of doing that. I just can't think of it right now. Basically, find the first component that's an item. And then check to see if it's name... Well, there should only be one. Yeah, but let's say, yeah, okay. Find the item, the, find the component of the entity that's, that's the item component, and then see if its name matches. So how do I have it find the component which is an item? Write your own unmap, unwrap item function? Yeah, I guess we'll just leave it the way it is. So, um, that works with that, and then I just need to get, okay, the, we already established the get components, I don't need that anymore, right? Well, actually use in more than one place, so maybe I should have a function that does that, like get item, function get item, from um, components. Component returns an optional item. And uh, okay, so it's right, it would be this, right? Okay, let me at least pretty this up a little bit. Work on this a little bit later. <laughs> okay, why didn't that... Did I screw this up somehow? Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. So, yeah, I can just call get item components and then uh, map or context get item there we go it put it in impl component make a method that turns it into an option item use that in find map well, that's what I did right I made um, made a turn it into option but you put it somewhere else you're saying make a method that turns it into an option item which we did and use that in find map Or you mean this part? Let me let me just get I think I think this will work for what I need it for right now. Just a comment on structure and code, okay. Oh I missed it. So it's context get item components and then unwrap to owned. And that didn't work. Why? Because this items is not a, a value anymore. It's just item. Okay, and that's going to change a bunch of other things, right? Right, so I don't have to do as object anymore and unwrap it. I just say item.name. Do I still get the... Yeah, I still get the item entity in there. Cool. So then, um, why is this still a problem? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Um, actually, hold on. Get item returned an optional reference to an item from components, which came from the message, so we need, we do need to own it. So then, um, that is owned. So what's the problem? What did I do wrong here? <sighs> Get item. 
returns an optional oh reference to an item okay um that's what isn't that what to own does just came here to shill rust analyzer extension been using it yeah i've been using it too you don't have to tune, you can derive clone. Yeah, but uh, why? I know I don't have to, but this should work. I'm wondering why it doesn't. Oh, the problem is that I need to borrow the components. Duh. <laughs> okay. Oh, but there's another problem. There's two problems. Expected item found a reference to item. Oh, two owned returns a reference, so would it be just into? Aha! Oh, maybe not. Not into. Do I just do unwrap and that's it? No, that's not enough. Two owned? That's not working. There is no item to owned. Take? So I have to implement to owned, derive clone. Try cloned unwrap if item influence clone. Well, it doesn't. I think that's the problem. I think I need to derive clone. So to owned would work if item implemented um, clone. Cloned? Is it standard clone? Or is it just going to work now? No. Now I have other problems. Irrefutable if let pattern. Okay. Oh yeah, I don't want to do a move there. Shoot. It got further and it delved into other problems. Okay, so... Um, 117 first. This is a problem because of what reason? Get item. Is a reference. Right. Okay, and then this error up here. Where exactly are we? This one right here is it's moving it. I don't need it to move. I can just get a reference to it. That didn't work. Uh, why not? Oh, um, wrong side. <laughs> this is a Rust C++ thing. <laughs> okay, we actually don't need get component anymore because we are using a structure. And I just have some warnings about that, right? And there's this other thing about irrefutable if let pattern. Which I don't understand that. What is irrefutable... If let pattern. Is that telling me that it it's always going to be true, so I don't even bother? It can't fail. I don't understand what it meant, what that means, actually. There's only one variant. Oh, but if I add more later, then it would um, break. I'll just leave that warning in there. Yeah. So this should just work, right? Even with those warnings? No. Expected variant tile... Unknown variant tile expected item. Okay, so it does panic on for t the tile part. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. Um, it ran into a tile and didn't know how to um, handle that variant. So I, I would need to hand, have a variant for everything, right? Because it looks like we will panic on... It doesn't know what to do with about the tile. Yeah, it expected it to be item and said, nope, it's not an item, it's a tile. So yeah, how do we... How would I, like, ignore variants other than item? It doesn't ignore it, looks like. You might be able to make a fit-all variant. 
Yeah, so this is this is a problem I run into when I try to make things type strict with these these um, flexible JSON types. Uh, where was I? I was here, right? Can we have something that's a catch-all? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I could do that for now. So that would be um tile. That's the only other one we're going to run into, right? Yeah, tile uh empty. Tile tile. And it's lower it's going to be lowercase in the discriminator. Yeah. Container. Okay. Some items are also containers. So I got to do the same thing with container. Container. Click, 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 word over container. Well, thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. We'll make this work. Forcing it down its throat. Invalid type null expected a string. Invalid type null expected a string. Okay, well, there's a null in there somewhere, I guess. Oh, bummer. Hey there, flyboy. So there must be an item in the game with no name. Uh, I suppose we could debug that. Okay, so on 193, we could, um, rather than just unwrapping that, I can do um, if let. Else. How does this work again? <sighs> Third other is what you want? Okay. But, um, okay, well, I guess I can try that first, since I'm kind of not sure what to do there yet. I could try what you're saying. So you're saying I don't need any, either of these if I just do other? Well, I can. I have to have another, right? Other, <laughs> whatever. So it's not rename. It'd be third other. Other, other. Just have an empty variant with no associated data. I oh, mean, like that. That's smart. Trying to deserialize YAML into something you can strict. That is strictly typed. Yeah, this strictly typed business is okay. It doesn't like other. So what am I doing wrong? Oh no, I I did it wrong. Um it has to, it has to go I have to actually have a one of these and it's um Oh no 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 Is that was that it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> what would I do without you? Come on D. I'd probably just struggle with it for a while until I figured it out. Alright, um Build it again. 
So that should ignore everything else. I'm kind of wondering if I'll still run into that. Um, yeah, there's so there's... Oh, no. Invalid type map. Expected unit variant. I have no idea what that means. Oh, it expects something. So I need to give it something. All right, we'll give it something. I can't have it be an empty. It doesn't like the unit. So we have to give it something. So other is just going to be empty for now. And why did it not like that? Do I need to have like rename? No. What does it not like about this? It has to be a unit variant. Okay, that, now we're screwed then. <laughs> if other only works with uh, unit and not maps, then this is not going to work. Um, so I guess I'll just go back to what I had before. I had um, tile and container. Right? Um, I'm not doing a game in Rust. I'm doing a tool for a game, and the tool is in Rust. So I use um, a lot of different languages in the game, and um, I'm very new at Rust. So I, f I figured I would start out practicing Rust on something, a small part of the game. So it's actually not the part that you play. It's the tool that I would run to find to find items that are lost in the game. So the way it's supposed to work is actually shown up here if I scroll up a bit. If I lose track of an item in my game, I can run this tool, which is written in Rust now, and it'll actually tell me what the number, what entity number, the key, in a sense, the, um, the unique ID of that item is, so that I can look it up in my other tools. But Flyboy, um, the more I use Rust, the more the game will be in Rust. <laughs> so if I start to port the aspects of the game that you actually use to play it, like the, the client or the backend server, then it would start to become more and more rusty, so to speak, right? Yeah, so I'm super new to Rust and starting out with um, a small tool. And, I'm, you know, based on how much time it's taking me to, to learn the concepts, it's sort of a good idea that I'm starting small. You know, start small until I get comfortable with it and I can use it for more things. Okay, the problem is that um, we're getting a null and expected a string at some point. I wanted to see what it looked like, so I wanted to catch the error. Instead of unwrapping here, I want to do something with it. I thought it was if let else, but I guess I'm wrong. This is an expression, right? So, oh, right, it's the other way around. I need to say, um, how do I do this? I don't know how to do this. If yeah, but how do I how do I get entity info in so I can use it later? I guess I have to put the whole thing in here, right? Um I can't use entity info. I have to do um Yeah, okay, entity info, right? Like you just said. But this isn't quite right, is it? Don't I have to do like, this is a result? Entity info? Something like that? Or can I just leave that off? What is entity info then? It's unknown. So yeah, don't I need to qualify that? Like, is, and is that a reference? Or not? I don't think I have the syntax right. Um, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this is too complex for me right now. Turbo fish. Good idea. So that would go... Um, when in doubt, turbo fish. Do the turbo fish. It goes there. Did I not get that value correct? 
Or is it um, from value entity info? From value entity info. And then and then you match it with OK. Got it. Okay. So then the result here is uh, we're going to get something weird, right? So I'm going to say, um, I don't know, debug. Uh, or print line. Bad item. Um, and I want to do pretty print. And this is going to be entity info value. There we go. Let's try that. Turbofish is a serious operator. Yes, that's how it's called. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we get. Okay, what is that bad? We've got a couple bad ones. What are these bad items we're getting back? Oh, it's something that's not even an item. It's a container. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. It's an item without a name. The item has no name. That's what it is. It's an item with no name. It's like the man with no name, but it's the item with no name. Okay then. So I have items in my game that have null names. There's only one of it. I guess I could repair that one. So just repair that item. That's item um, 53525. Fifty-three, five twenty-five. Fetch. It's this treasure chest, which is where I would um, hit go. How do I actually see where it is in the game? Position, right? Oh, it's not even in the game anywhere. Something is. Oh, it's a chest that someone is holding in their inventory, and I never named it. Okay. Well, I can just give it a name. Mr. Midori's treasure chest. There. Now it has a name. <laughs> it did find a bug. It found an item that um, should have had a name and didn't. Yeah, someone's holding a chest. I don't know why we did that. I was probably... It was probably the end of one of my streams and someone was like giving me a lot of input and feedback. And I said, as a reward here, let me give you a box you can set on the ground and put your money in. Yeah, someone's holding a chest. Yep. Okay, so if I run this again, we won't have any... Oh, there's still a bad item. Another one. 78618. Uh, we can close... We can close this one. Yep. All right, so then... Um, 78618. What's that? What is that? Oh, there's a pile of gold on the ground. Oh, wait a minute, it has a, it has a name. Why did this end up being a bad item? It has a name. Gold. I guess I should print out what the error is. Yeah. Okay, well, let's print out what the error is. I don't know. It's not that the name is null. It's something else. So, um... I have to do, like... Else if... I do an else if here. Do I need to do um, a match instead of a let? If let... Yeah, but I don't want to debug every single item in the game. I just want to see the ones that didn't match. I think I want to do a match on this. And then if it's an if it's okay, then do this. If it's an error, then we'll do the debug on the error. Error error. Debug error. 
right? Can I not do that? Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Need to return something. I think you're right. Well, no. I just want to consume it, right? Drop. Uh, I have to do it the other way, right? Drop. Drop it. Drop it. Drop that. Drop that air. All right. Basically, we don't need that to go anywhere. We just need it to drop. Okay, let's run it now. Unknown variant look. Expected. Oh, some items in the game have a look variant. Interesting. Did that one have a look variant? It didn't. I must have looked at the wrong item before. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I just, it's one kind of component an item can have. But you can see, you guys can see the complexity involved here. Like, in order to get it to match this deserialize, I have to, like, cover all the other kinds of components an item might have attached to it. And so I don't know, I don't know if I would use it for this purpose going forward. We'll just keep it now as an, as a, because I've already invested in it, and it's called the funk sunken f cost fallacy. Look. I think I will put the code back to using, to not using deserialize, or from value. Yeah, okay, so now it's, now it's working, and it's doing less um, dynamic access to the JSON, and just throwing away the extra data we don't care about. Dr. Martin Mullen about sunken cost fallacy. I don't know Martin Mullen. <laughs> you can make look an option type. Marble Machine X Project? Okay, I don't know. Is that fair code font? Yes, it is. I use fair code with the font ligatures turned on. So yeah, if I could get away with not having all this stuff, it would be nice. So we tried third um, other, and it didn't work because other expects the um, data to be um, a unit and not a map. That's a problem. I'm not sure what to do about that. But let me just call it here. I have gone way over time. Third alias look, alias tile, just one variant. If we want to like toss them all away, you're saying? So what would I do? I would just have one of these called other. Is that what you're saying? And toss, toss it away by having um, alias. That's what you're saying, right? To do that. But I don't ha I don't like the fact that I have to list them all, all the these th different things that we're throwing away. That's that's a bummer. <laughs> it should still work though, right? Yeah, that works. It's it is worth trying. It's it's good. I like the even if I don't end up using this code going forward, it's nice to experiment and look at what you can do with it. To, it helps me learn this stuff, so I do appreciate all of that. If, if if the way I've been developing and porting this code seems strange to you, a lot of it's because I'm using it as a vehicle to get really deep into Rust and understand what the heck we're doing. So I've now gotten exposed to how we use um, the derive deserialize with CERD and um, deriving the uh, clone attribute and all that and the, the renaming and the alias. And we've been exposed to a lot of different things, including... Um, the cow. Moo. Didn't know anything about the cow before today. Didn't know you could do that. Um, and then how we did um, manipulation of sir JSON objects without doing deserialize. That was really interesting because I got exposure to the, the different um, functional stuff. I wonder if it were getting rid of the other object, just have an empty variant. Uh, maybe. Well, yeah, that's what we tried. But it didn't like it if the data actually had a map in there. 
that wasn't we tried that and it didn't work because um it said well this is the the data for that it's a unit but it's given a map and so it didn't fit oh it's still not working for externally tag unions and that's probably for the same reason that i ran into right it should work without any data, but it, it doesn't because it expects it to be exactly a unit. Yeah. All right. Maybe I should plus one this one. <laughs> I'm logged into this, right? Can I just plus one it? I am logged in. We're going to do it, chat. Thumbs up. I thumbs up it. I wonder if that helps at all. I should say featured on my stream today. <laughs> Did not because you have external tags, not inner ones. Yeah. All right, so I'm keeping this around because I'll probably go back to that because this way it lets me um, be more, a little bit more dynamic about it and not need to specify these um, variants that we don't actually care about. It did compile, it failed at runtime, yeah. It, it was a runtime error. Yeah, it failed, failed to parse saying, oh, I have this map, but you don't have any, anything in the other to store it in. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. I'm out of energy. I had fun, though. I hope you had fun, too. I'm look, glancing off to the side here because I need to find someone we're going to raid. Oh, bye, Kamundi. Thank you for all your help. You've been very nice. Really helpful. We're learning a lot today. And bye, 715209. I don't think there's anyone that I know that's doing Rust right now. Not many people doing rest, although we could raid someone who's doing who's learning something else. Gonna chill tonight? Probably. Um Yeah, where's Chris? Is he asleep? <laughs> the thanks, Silmeth. I appreciate all of the help. All the learning is really good. It might be in Griffin. Is he going right now? Could we raid him? Oh he is he's is doing working. Yeah, I Kinda don't want to raid a chill stream though. Could raid Museum? Oh, is he going now? Oh yeah, why don't we just raid Museum then? Museum is always doing Rust. I even have a command that includes his name in it. I am learning it, but to see people actually using it for real, Mr. Halsey or Museum, and we're gonna raid Museum right now. So let's. He's not a streamer with a webcam like me. It's just music, which you can mute. And he interacts completely through chat, so it's a little bit of a different format, but he has been, he's been streaming ra random projects on Rust for years. And um, so you'll, if you like Rust, you'll probably enjoy watching him code, although I have a hard time reading some of his code, but that's just because I'm learning Rust. All right, I've spoken enough. Let's do the raid. I hope I typed his name right. <laughs> Looks right to me. Okay, here we go. So I'll be back on Thursday. My schedule is such that I can't stream on most Wednesdays. So I'll be back on Thursday, but it'll be the same time every day I do stream. It's 9.15 in the morning for me, 16.15 UTC. So I will see you on Thursday. Thank you for all the follows. Thank you for that follow just now. And I hope to see you guys on Thursday. And stay safe and enjoy Museum's stream. Bye!